stance? The safety concern is first and foremost, as well as the fact that the FDA should be held accountable for putting powerful pharmaceutical industries ahead of women's safety. We deserve better. There are clear legal standards that require the FDA to ensure that drugs are safe before they're approved. And those same standards require that the FDA have adequate tests and sufficient information to demonstrate that women will be safe. And so by removing the fact that a woman would even need to visit in person with a doctor puts her at great risk. And it not only flouts the law, but again, it puts women in harm's way. Before I let you go, just tell me, in our conversation, I've heard you focus a lot on this notion of when the FDA changed the rules, the big change was that you didn't have to go see a doctor in person anymore, right? You could just get it through the mail. Um, but tell me a little bit more about the other changes, right? Like, is it is it a problem to have a nurse prescribe the drug? Is it a problem that this drug n may now be used for up to 10 weeks of pregnancy rather than seven? It is a problem. I think first and foremost, the in-person physician requirement is critical, and that's the last safeguard that they removed in 2021. And that puts women at, in jeopardy, in great jeopardy, because it, it it essentially means that women can't give informed consent. They don't know the excruciating pain, how much bleeding is severe enough to go to a hospital, knowing that up to 7% of women need surgical intervention because of that. Um, and so that is one of the reasons that we focus on that, is that there is no physician care when you're telling a woman to go into labor. But in addition to that, the age of the baby is critically important. Um, and the FDA essentially increased the time in which the drug can be taken from seven weeks of pregnancy to 10 weeks. How is a woman to know for sure whether she's in that window? And if she's not in that window of 10 weeks, that also causes potentially life-threatening issues that would arise. Um, and, and I would just say again, like upwards of 13% of women, according to the FDA's own studies that it used, has said that taking the drug results in uh, unplanned care. That um, And in many cases, this care is, is severe in terms of the implications of it for the woman's safety. Yeah, and you've argued, I want our listeners to know, you have personally argued before the Supreme Court. Um, so you you know that uh, the justices like to reference Congress a lot. You know, oh, this is in the purview of Congress, or Congress said X, Y, and Z should be, should be done. I imagine we might hear some questions from the justices about that, because it is Congress who gave the FDA the, the I guess, the power it has, right, that it's tasked with regulating drug safety. Um, why isn't this for Congress to decide what the FDA gets to decide? Um, and, it, and, and why does it belong in a court? Well, Congress did decide what authority that the FDA has, and the FDA hasn't abided by the authority that it's been given. The law is very clear that the FDA needs to only approve drugs when it determines that those drugs are safe for the public. And there are very specific requirements for it to do so, including relying on adequate testing and sufficient information, including writing down what they're, what they're basing it on. And the FDA's own sources explicitly say that the data that it relied on does not prove that the drug is safe. And, and so I think right then and there, we know that the FDA has violated the law. And one other thing that I would point out in terms of the restrictions that the FDA lifted, and I think there's no coincidence about this either, the FDA lifted the obligation that was imposed for 16 years on the use of this drug for physicians to report adverse consequences that are serious in nature to the government. And so they not only are saying that they're that they should be able to lift these standards, but they're not even requiring physicians to report on the severe complications any longer. Kristen Wagner, president of the Alliance Defending Freedom, thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Kale and Company, morning 6 till 10, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. 
I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawon'twait.com. Attention business owners. Stop throwing your hard-earned money away on rent. Imagine owning your own building and saving thousands every year. Sound impossible? Not if you use General Steel. General Steel can help you save thousands by owning your own custom-designed building. Call 1-866-74-STEEL. That's 1-866-74-STEEL to see how much money you can save with General Steel. Our buildings come with a 50-year warranty and thousands of companies from Fortune 500 corporations to startups have trusted the General with their building needs. If you need to expand or start a new business, you really need General Steel. I'm very impressed with General Steel. Everyone's been extremely helpful. I'd recommend General Steel to anyone looking to build a steel building. Call 1-866-74-STEEL to find out how quickly your business can move into one of our quick construction kits, like a 50 by 100 perfect for the small business owner or a 200 by 450 favorite of the Fortune 500. Just call 1-866-74-STEEL. That's 1-866-74-STEEL. Hey, Dawn Stensland here. You've heard me talk about Chapman windows, doors, and siding. How much I love my new patio doors. You know by now, if I needed windows, doors, or siding, I'd only trust the Chapman team. If you're thinking of updating your current siding or removing your current stucco and replacing it with siding, think Chapman. With the new updated siding choices available, the curb appeal of your home will pop. If you currently have stucco, updating it with James Hardy plank or vinyl siding will truly add value to your home. If you're looking to sell, you can bet buyers will value updated new siding. And right now would be a good time to get ahead of the ball and plan your siding project for 2024. The Certified Chapman installers are the folks you want on the job. If you or someone you know are looking for windows, doors, siding, stucco remediation, shutters, or hardware, give them a call or text them 610-431-8898, chapmanwindowsdoors.com. Chapman, the name I trust. Tell them Dawn sent you. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now. 800-575-6986. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and Yelp and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-575-6986. That's 800-575-6986. Tax Relief Advocates, real solutions for real people. Click this link now to review my bank transfer. I didn't make a bank transfer. Ugh, another phishing message. Are you frustrated by these two? So much of our lives are online today. To make sure my information is protected, I checked out CISA's Secure Our World resources. They've got four simple ways we can stay safe online. First, learn to recognize and report phishing. Next, create a strong, unique password for each online account and use a password manager if you can. Then turn on multi-factor authentication for extra security and you'll receive a code when logging in. And finally, turn on automatic software updates for convenience and safety. Click here to track my delivery. Another phishing message. But now I know how to protect myself from scammers and you can learn too. Go to CISA at cisa.gov forward slash secure our world for more quick, easy tips to be safer online. Hey, Clementon. Yeah! We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. 
WPHT. Now, a look at what's happening from the Fox News Rundown. Good morning. It's Tuesday, March 26th. This is the Fox News Rundown. I'm Sue Guzman. The Supreme Court will hear arguments in a major abortion pill case today. We have a preview from Fox's Ryan Schmelz. Mifepristone is a widely used drug to end pregnancies, and its approval process is facing legal challenges. The Alliance for Defending Freedom argues the FDA removed regulations like in-person doctor visits, making it less safe for women using the pill. OBGYN Dr. Christina Francis says the argument isn't about abortion. This is about taking care of our patients. It's not about whether someone is pro-life or not pro-life. This is about ensuring that women have fully and informed consent. Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren argues that the FDA has made clear mifepristone is safe and effective and the case is a way for Republicans to push a national abortion ban. A ruling is expected in about three months. In Washington, Ryan Schmelz, Fox News. Former President Trump's social media platform, Truth Social, preparing to go public on the stock market today. Fox of Business's Kelly O'Grady reports. It's actually going to start trading tomorrow, in fact. So Trump Media and Technology Group will list on the NASDAQ under the ticker DJT, or Trump's initials. And folks are really excited about this prospect. So the parent company behind Truth Social is merging with the Digital World Acquisition Group. That's DWAC. It soared today. It finished 35% up. And these aren't your institutional investors. A lot are smaller retail investors. They're Trump supporters. They want to plug their candidate. So this could potentially become the ultimate meme stock tomorrow. And former President Trump will own 58% of the new entities that could be valued at more than $3.5 billion. Presidential hopeful Robert F. Kennedy Jr. expected to announce his pick for a running mate today. Fox's Tanya J. Powers with more. Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s campaign says he will reveal his choice choice for vice president at an event in Oakland, California. Several names have been floated as a possible VP pick, and the campaign has confirmed two of those on the short list, NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers and former pro wrestler and Minnesota governor Jesse Ventura. Another name rumored to be under consideration, California-based attorney and mega donor Nicole Shanahan. Kennedy has upcoming campaign stops scheduled in California and Pennsylvania. Tanya J. Powers, Fox News. President Biden heads to North Carolina for a campaign event today where he will address a crowd of supporters in the state's capital. President Biden travels to Raleigh, North Carolina today where he's expecting to speak in front of a crowd of supporters on topics involving health care, which White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says is under attack by the president's opponents. Republican Study Committee released a budget which proposes devastating cuts to Medicare, to Social Security, and Affordable Care Act. Both the president and his former boss, former President Barack Obama, recently marked the anniversary of the passing of the Affordable Care Act, considered their signature accomplishment. Recent polls show North Carolina is a state where the president appears to be losing political ground. Eben Brown, Fox News. President Biden's relationship with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu continuing to sour. On Monday, after the U.S. chose not to veto a U.N. resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, Netanyahu canceled a delegation headed to Washington to discuss the offensive in Rafah. And there was no winner in Monday night's Powerball jackpot, so it rolls over for at least $865 million for Wednesday's drawing. I'm Sue Guzman on the Fox News Rundown. This is the Fox News Rundown. Free speech lives here. Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Kale and Company weekday mornings 6 till 10. 107000 plus dollars. That's amazing. To my knowledge, that is about a $15,000 gain from last year. Huge. A sincere thank you to everybody. Woo. Whether you donated 5 bucks, $2,500, anywhere in between. The Travis Manion Foundation just doesn't open up and close up shop one day a year. They're around all the time. Absolutely. Friday was just a great, great showing from so many people. Start your day with Kale and Company. Weekday morning, 6 till 10. On Talk Radio 1210, WP. HD and the free Odyssey app. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. Pick up a delicious dinner at Captain Chucky's. Locations everywhere. Try the all-new Bang Bang Jumbo Lump Crab Cake. Delicious, creamy, five-ounce Jumbo Lump bread at Crab Cake with a kick for those who like to spice it up. Check stores for availability. Go to WeLoveCrabCakes.com. 
Millions of Americans are losing their medical assistance or Medicaid coverage. If this affects you, Independence Blue Cross can help. You may be eligible to enroll in a health plan for as little as $0 a month. With Independence Blue Cross, you get the largest provider network in the area, including most Keystone First doctors and hospitals. We also offer free 24-7 telemedicine, coverage for hospital stays and prescriptions. See if you qualify for $0 health insurance and enroll today. Call Independence Blue Cross at 1-844-464-2583 or visit ibx.com slash stay covered. Don't miss Good News in Real Estate with Deanne Katsaros and Mark Cumberland, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Find out all you need to know about home buying and selling. Considering a career in real estate? Visit PhiladelphiaRealEstateClasses.com. Good News in Real Estate, Saturdays 1 p.m. on WPHT. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. In the process, started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. The ugly truth is when you buy a timeshare, you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. I recently helped a couple that had their maintenance fees go from $800 to $3,200 a year. They also received a $4,000 assessment for a hurricane that was over 1,000 miles away. Sound crazy? The crazy thing is this never ends. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. Call 800-329-2121. That's 800-329-2121. 800-329-2121. Children are the greatest joy and our best hope for a better future. Friends, they are the future. But did you know that millions of kids right here in our own backyard are facing hunger every day? Without healthy food, it's harder to grow, to thrive, to feel their best. The impact when children don't have enough to eat is tremendous because when you're hungry and your basic needs aren't being met, you cannot learn. Every child deserves to be fed. This is a problem we know how to solve. Food is not just food. It's energy, health, confidence, hope and even love. Yes, love. Breakfast in the classroom contributes to kids being more focused, which leads to higher grades, and simply just their well-being. Thank you! Learn more about how No Kid Hungry is helping end child hunger in America at helpnokidhungry.org. Standing at the edge of a rocky shore, you breathe in the cool, salty air, watching the sun disappear on the horizon. Across the globe, someone begins their day along a sandy beach, listening to the rhythm of the crashing waves. You each envision a world beneath the water, vibrant life in every imaginable form. Now, imagine it's all gone. What was once a place of wonder and beauty is now a dull, lifeless wasteland. Food, jobs, medicine, all gifts from the ocean all gone. Time is running out to protect our oceans, and without our love, everything the oceans provide can and will disappear. It's our choice. Love it or lose it. Help protect our oceans. Visit World Wildlife Fund at wwf.org love. Right now, our country feels divided, but there's a place where people are coming together. I was nervous to talk to someone so different than me. Me too. Love Has No Labels and One Small Step are helping people with different political views, beliefs, and experiences connect through conversation, and it feels good. This conversation gives me hope. It gives me a lot of hope, too. Take a step toward bringing our country and your community together. Start a conversation at lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step. A message from StoryCorps, Love Has No Labels, and the Ad Council. Be sure to follow Talk Radio 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now is the Fox News Rundown. Now, the latest from Fox Business. I'm Maria Bartiromo, and this is the Fox Business Report. A down day across the board on Wall Street Monday to start the trading week. The Dow lost more than 162, the S&P 500 down 16, and the Nasdaq fell a little more than 44 points. Shares of Digital World Acquisition surged 35% after the company's merger with former President Donald Trump's social media company Truth Social officially closed. The name of the company has now been changed to Trump Media and Technology Group, 
its shares will begin trading on NASDAQ today under the ticker symbol DJT. New home sales declined in February, down three-tenths of a percent, but they're up 5.9% from a year ago. The median sales price of a new home last month, $400,500. That's the lowest since June of 2021. GameStop announces earnings today, and we'll also get the latest details on the Consumer Confidence Index. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Kevin Uretsky, invested in you. This is the Fox News Rundown. Rundown. What was supposed to be a concert turned into a massacre. Friday night in Russia when terrorists stormed into a theater. More than 130 people were killed, many more injured. Russian leader Vladimir Putin claims Ukraine was in on that terror plot, though. An ISIS group claims it was responsible. ISIS would love to do what they did in Moscow here in the United States in multiple places if they could. Republican Senator Marco Rubio tells Fox. No one can tell me that of the 9 million people that have entered this country illegally, there isn't a really high probability that at least four are members of an organization like this, especially when the FBI director himself confirmed to me in an open hearing of the Intelligence Committee that they are very concerned about a trafficking network that is linked to terrorists like ISIS. So here's how it all went down in Russia Friday night when 6,500 people were at the Crocus City Hall to see the Russian rock band Picnic. Four terrorists in military fatigues carrying AK 47s as well as backpacks full of inflammable fuel. Benjamin Hall is Fox News senior correspondent based in London. They then spent the next hour, hour and a half going around and indiscriminately shooting at everyone who was there. Uh, there are videos online showing the brutality of some of them, uh, of their acts. And then they set fire to the facade as well as to parts inside. Uh, it's still unclear how many people died as a result of the shooting and how many people died from suffocation. But they did find, for example, whole bathrooms full of many people uh, who died from suffocation, including uh, uh, mothers holding their children. But in the end, 137 people were killed. Over 200 have been injured. And we do expect the number uh, to rise. There were four suspects who went to court on Sunday and they didn't look very good, did they? No. About six hours after the attack, the Russian uh, military arrested and captured these four people. They were driving west of Moscow and um, they were pulled out of their car and there are videos online showing, frankly, some brutal torture. There's one in which a Russian soldier cuts off the ear of one of them and makes him eat his own ear. Oh, there are others wow. where they have um, electrical cords tied over their body and they're being electrocuted. So this was, I mean, terrible torture uh, of these terrorists. And it's, it's really interesting to see because it's a clear decision by the Russian authorities to show their strong response in return for this. Yeah. Now, where they were picked up, what was the Russians say they were driving towards Ukraine. And this is the big point here. Russia is now blaming Ukraine, saying they were armed by Ukraine and Ukraine was getting ready to let them into Ukraine. That, frankly, is very, very hard to believe, considering the trench warfare, the minefields that exist along there. It is more likely that they were heading towards Belarus, which is where their car license plate was as well. But again, big mixture here with the Russians saying it was Ukraine and vowing revenge and um, everyone else, the Western intelligence agencies, the U.S. intelligence agencies saying this was very clearly ISIS. Yeah, no, Ukraine's President Zelensky, he said that the hundreds of thousands of Russians who are now killing on Ukrainian land would be enough to stop any terrorists. And if the Russians are ready to silently die in terror attacks and do not ask any questions to their security and intelligence agencies, then Vladimir Putin will try to turn this situation to his personal advantage again, which clearly is what's happening, right? which he's done before. You know, in 1999, there were four buildings blown up in Western Moscow, and Vladimir Putin, who was the mayor at the time, used the opportunity to start the Chechen war. Effectively, he got his own power because of the Chechen war and the influence it gave him. Now, uh, explosives found back then in 1999 have since been tied to the FSB, so it's thought that Putin was definitely behind those. However, it's not thought that Putin 
and the Russians were behind these attacks, they are merely trying to use it in their favor. There's a lot of evidence suggesting that it was ISIS. ISIS themselves have released video taken by the attackers inside the music hall, so very firsthand, um, and as well as the U.S. intelligence agencies have said this, and they warned just two and a half weeks ago that there would be a terror attack of this kind inside Russia, and they warned all American citizens to stay away from music halls as well as anywhere else. So a lot of evidence pointing towards ISIS right now, uh, but still, the Russian message is that this was Ukraine. And look, we saw a lot of uh, increased um, rockets and missiles being fired in Ukraine over the weekend. And we worry and wonder about what might happen next. Yeah, and obviously, if uh, President Putin is going to be under any kind of scrutiny over the terror attack that happens on his watch, um, he's going to want to yeah. shift the focus away. Because didn't the U.S. warn Russia a couple of weeks ago about a potential attack? Two and a half weeks ago, they warned Americans in Russia not to go to any music uh, concerts or music halls. But um, Putin must shift the blame because it is a real negative on himself in Russia if people start saying, you could have this war over there, but you can't protect your own people at home. Um, and so that's what Putin is trying to avoid right now. And there was also really terrible responses from the Russian uh, law enforcement. The main Russian law enforcement around Moscow is two miles away from this concert hall that was attacked. And yet it took them about two hours to get there. And in the past, the Russian law enforcement have actually used that very music hall to practice in case there were terror attacks there. So it's a big question as to why no one arrived on the scene for a couple of hours, really. So a lot of questions that Putin is trying to shift the focus away from his responsibility and making it Ukraine's responsibility. Let's go to ISIS. Now, it was five years ago, almost to this day, March 2019, when the U.S.-led coalition helped root ISIS fighters out of their so-called Islamic State in Syria, their last stronghold. And, and Benjamin, you were there reporting on all that. I remember. We even had you on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, I was, you know, I covered ISIS from their very beginning to their very end. It was sort of the thing that really uh, was the focus of my career. I was there in Baroz, this town in southwestern Syria, on the hills around it, watching as the very last few ISIS members were picked off. And it felt like a real victory. Look, there are tens of thousands in camps still, and the ISIS ideology still exists around that region. But with American support and with, frankly, President Trump, saying, taking the gloves off and saying, go in and get rid of them. The caliphate was totally defeated, but we are starting to see and be worried about new ISIS uh, attacks, uh, certainly, you know, uh, small cells like the ones we saw in Moscow um, are active. And France said over the weekend that a terror, a terror cell from ISIS-K had tried to carry out an attack in France as well. Now, I do want to quickly point out the difference here. I was watching in Syria and Iraq the caliphate. That was ISIS proper, if you will. Okay. The Islamic State, Iraq, and, uh, and al-Sham. ISIS-K, uh, which carried out the attack in Moscow, they are the Afghan version of ISIS, and okay. they were formed... Okay, that, so yes. are they part of the same organization, or uh, are they totally separate? Does the regular ISIS still exist at all? Yes and no. You know, they, they have the same ideology, but they have sort of different command structures. I mean, the the online, you know, uh, ISIS newspaper that put out the video is the ISIS newspaper that represents all of ISIS. Um, so there are definite connections, but they will be funded in slightly different ways. They will get their funding. And these really are, you know, the U.S. has done a really good job in breaking down the financing. So they can't share and send money as they used to. So there are ideological connections, but not a lot of real sort of uh, formal connections. All right. This is also what I found interesting. ISIS-K has a common enemy with the U.S. and Afghanistan. They don't like the Taliban. Yeah. And also, uh, ISIS-K doesn't like Russia. This is very interesting to me. Well, yes. I mean, first of all, ISIS-K were the ones behind the bombing at the Afghan uh, Khalid airport um, that killed 13 Americans. They have a gate bombing, the right. They were the ones behind there. But in the lead-up to uh, U.S. withdrawal, America was giving intel to the Taliban to bomb and destroy ISIS-K targets. So you actually had the U.S. and the Taliban sharing information to target ISIS-K. And yes, they they can't stand, for example, Iran, and they, they launched the big attack on the Shia uh, uh, shrine in Iran, uh, was it last year, kill hundreds. And they can't stand Russia either because of Russia's support for the Syrian government and it's allied with Iran. So that's what... ISIS-K is focused on, as opposed to proper ISIS, which really wants to form a caliphate rather than target these sort of countries.
One of the concerns with ISIS-K is that withdrawal. The U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan in 2021, there were a lot of members of Congress who were worried that because we weren't there anymore, we didn't have a lot of intelligence on the ground anymore in Afghanistan to track ISIS-K. Is that still the issue? Yeah, I know there was always those voices who said we should keep uh, 2,500 roughly soldiers in Afghanistan, keep the air base, the Bagram air base. You know, 2,500 American soldiers is how many are in Iraq and Syria at the moment. And it's just an, a, a number that allows them to operate, to allow to collect intelligence. Well, that doesn't exist in Afghanistan. There is no intelligence there. And um, the Taliban do not have total control over all the country. There are these pockets, particularly up along the Pakistani border, where um, groups like ISIS-K can retain some strength. And so, yes, having pulled out of Afghanistan totally, America has left a country where you know, terror groups like this can thrive, can grow strong, uh, if they can hold the Taliban back. All right. I always do this when you're on with us. You're searching for Heroes podcast. Who's next? It's very interesting this week, that, of what we've been talking about. The podcast episode that just came out is with um, Jim Foley's mother, Diane Foley. Jim Foley was the American journalist who was taken by ISIS in Syria and beheaded in the orange jumpsuit oh, yeah. by ISIS. Awful. Awful. And it, it really led to a huge change. And so um, we've been talking a lot about ISIS, and I spoke to his mother, who has gone through a huge amount. She actually sat down with one of the four people who killed her son, an English terrorist, who has now been moved to America. And Those ISIS, the ISIS Beatles? Is that who they were? They were called the Beatles? Exactly. Yeah. And she, she talked? Sat she sat down with the killer? in an American courtroom. He's been sentenced to life and she Ugh. wants to sit down. Her book is amazing. It's her looking him in the eyes and then talking. And she's got this remarkable story of resilience where she doesn't hate. She's trying to get through this. And so it's fascinating to listen to her. And what was also fascinating is that Jim Foley, while he was being held by ISIS, was known to be the most resilient person there. And he was keeping everyone, all the other hostages up. He was motivating them. He was the resilient one amongst them. So uh, fascinating to talk about him. He was a resilient person. His mother is a resilient person. And so uh, great having them on the podcast, or rather, rather having the mother on the podcast and talking about uh, Jim. Yes. The podcast is Searching for Heroes, and you can get that on the Fox News Podcast Network, along with the rundown, of course. Benjamin Hall, Fox News senior correspondent in London on this whole ISIS and Russia. Very interesting. Thanks so much. It always my pleasure, Dave. Thank you. Rich Seoli, afternoons 3 to 7, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Spring is in the air, but so are airborne allergens like tree pollen, grass, mold, and ragweed. If spring allergies keep you trapped inside, then you need Navaj Nasal Care to keep you breathing clearly and enjoying all the beauties of spring. Navaj helps clear nasal passages that are often clogged because of seasonal allergies. Navaj gently flushes a pure, refreshing saline solution through your nasal passages to clear out congestion, sucking out that springtime pollen and other irritants trapped in your nose. Navaj springs into action quickly, helping you breathe more clearly in just 30 seconds. And you don't need a never-ending cycle of decongestants that can leave you feeling drowsy. Navaj is the fast and easy drug-free allergy solution that helps you breathe easier, sleep better, and feel healthier. Get Navaj today so you can get outdoors and enjoy your favorite springtime activities. Navaj is available online at navaj.com or in stores at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, and Target. Navaj, N-A-V-A-G-E. Breathe easy. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawontwait.com. 
Just one question can save a child's life. Before your child visits a friend, ask if there's an unlocked gun in the house. With an average of 13 children dying from guns every day, guns are now the leading cause of death among children. Ask the question and do your part to keep children safe. To help get the conversation going, 59 regional hospitals united to offer life-saving tips. Learn more by visiting hospitalstogether.com. That's hospitalstogether.com. Now there's a simple, easy, and effective way to clean your nose and protect your health. It's called Navage. Navage, available at navage.com. A promise is potent, born of intention, fueled by commitment. It's seeing things through, always showing up. And we know a thing or two about promises here at Susan G. Komen. Over 40 years ago, we locked arms with you toward one vision, a world without breast cancer. By investing in life-saving research and standing up for patient rights, we are shifting the system so all people everywhere get the care they deserve. Because if you've just been diagnosed and don't know where to turn, we've got you. If you can't afford the treatment you need, we've got you. And if you are driven to raise money to honor the best friend you've just lost, we have a place for you here because of you. We're supporting those who need help today while tirelessly searching for tomorrow's cures. Ending breast cancer needs all of us. Visit Komen.org and be a part of the Susan G. Komen community today. What if being in recovery from a mental or substance use disorder was something we proudly showed the world? Millions of people are in recovery, sharing hope and support with family, friends, and community. Join the Voices for Recovery. For confidential information for mental and substance use disorders, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Fox News, I'm Sue Guzman. The iconic Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore collapsing after a cargo ship collided into it this morning. Former Washington, D.C. police officer Ted Williams joining Fox's Ashley Strohmeyer by phone. That bridge, even at that time of the morning, Ashley, is very traveled. Rescue personnel and dive teams on the scene attempting to rescue up to 20 people believed to have fallen into Baltimore Harbor. New York City police officer was fatally shot during a vehicle stop yesterday. New York City Police Department Commissioner Edward Caban. After approaching the car, the suspect inside the vehicle displayed a firearm and pointed it toward the officers. Shots were fired. And one of our officers was struck. Officer Jonathan Diller was killed. The suspect had 21 prior arrests. America's listening to Fox News. This is the Fox News Rundown. Now a look at sports. Los Angeles Dodgers star Shohei Otani addressed the allegations surrounding his former interpreter, Ipe Mizuhara, after Otani's representatives accused Mizuhara last week of a, quote, massive theft of his funds to place bets with an alleged illegal bookmaker. With the help of a different interpreter, Otani said Monday that he never bet on sports and that Mizuhara was stealing from him. The two-time MVP said he first learned of Mizuhara's gambling addiction and debt after the Dodgers' first game of the season in Korea when Mizuhara addressed the team. Otani alleged that in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with his former interpreter, Mizuhara admitted to sending money using Otani's account. That's sports on the Fox News Rundown. I'm Joe Morgan, Fox News. Now an update from Outkick's Hot Mike. Caitlin Clark had such a big impact on women's college basketball. I'm going to give you a, a very easy answer to this and why I don't think it's going to translate to the WNBA. The University of Iowa and the state of Iowa has been around a very long time in the United States. So regardless if you ever cared at all about Iowa women's basketball, you are going to then have an attachment to Caitlin Clark when she's playing at your university. If you are a Big Ten fan, and there are plenty of them that don't care a lot about the women's basketball program at their school, but when Caitlin Clark comes to town, they're going to care. The Indiana Fever have been a team since 2000 when they got an expansion WNBA team. Now, suddenly the traveling roadshow that was Caitlin Clark in college basketball, does that become a thing in the WNBA? Maybe, but is it going to make people be more brand aware about WNBA franchises and the league as a whole? I think that's a stretch. I'm Chad Withrow with Hot Mike with Hutton and Withrow on the Fox News Rundown. 
This is a Bloomberg Money Minute. Tight supplies of existing homes are keeping selling prices high. They keep setting new records each month. But over in the new home market, there's been a large decline in the median sales price, more than 7.5% in the 12 months ending in February. The discount didn't draw in more buyers. The Commerce Department says new home sales slipped last month for the first time in three months. If you're hoping to grab some DVF at Target, you may be out of luck. That's designer Diane von Furstenberg's limited edition line. It went on sale early Saturday, and according to USA Today, many items are already sold out. The spring-inspired collection was created by the fashion designer and her granddaughter. It includes more than 200 items, like clothing for women, girls, and babies, and beauty and home items. And if you think chocolate Easter eggs and bunnies are more expensive now, just wait until next year. Drought and crop disease have hit cocoa harvests in West Africa, a problem the market doesn't see going away anytime soon. The price of cocoa keeps rising, surpassing $9,000 a ton for the first time ever. Erica Herskowitz, Bloomberg Radio. I've been asked a thousand times, did you plan on becoming the largest injury law firm in the world? And the answer is no. When I started, there were just two of us. Today, Morgan & Morgan has almost 800 lawyers alone. No injury firm in the country has anywhere close to that. We set out to be focused on our clients and to have a commitment to trying cases and winning. And when you have those results at trial, you're able to settle most of your cases quickly and fairly. Reputation matters. We grew like this because we worked hard and so many former clients referred family and friends. And what I believe is the main reason is we deliver for our clients a lot. Hard work and client satisfaction was our plan. It worked. Hope is not a plan. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Visit ForThePeople.com for an office near you. Texting enrolls you into reoccurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates may apply. Hey, Dan, how you doing? Haven't seen you around the gym for a while. Yeah, I've really fallen off. Since I turned 40, I just don't get the results I used to get. Could be a lower testosterone. Lower T. Yeah, I went through it a while back. Once you hit 40, your body has less free testosterone. I got Nugenix Total T, and it's made a huge difference for me. I've seen that on TV. Is it for real? Oh, yeah. The patented key ingredient is something called Testafin, which helps boost free and total testosterone levels to help you trim up and stay lean. And it's made a difference for you? Man, I feel like I'm in my 20s again. At work, in the gym, and in the bedroom. Are they still giving out complimentary bottles for people to try it for themselves? Yeah, you just need to send them a text. Text TIP to 321321 right now for your complimentary bottle of Nugenics Total Tea, the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC. Plus, text now and we'll include a bottle of Nugenics Thermo, our most powerful fat incinerator ever to help you get back into shape fast, absolutely free. Text TIP to 321321. That's TIP to 321321. Three, two, one. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 95% cheaper? And you can get it online at hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation to determine the ED medication that's best for you. Discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and a range of treatment options, including trusted generic alternatives to the name brands, at up to 95% off. ED is personal, and at Hims, so is treating it. Just go to hymns.com slash joy and get connected to a licensed medical provider online for free. With zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, hymns.com slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit, himscom slash J-O-Y. 
Join us for April baseball that's sure to rock when the Rockies visit CBP on Monday, April 15th and Tuesday, April 16th, both at 640 and Wednesday, April 17th at 605. Secure your seats at phillies.com. It will be double the fun at CBP on Hatfield Phillies Franks BOGO nights when fans can purchase two hot dogs for the price of one. Don't miss out on April 2nd and April 16th, both at 640. Get tickets now at phillies.com. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. Always live on the free Odyssey app. From the Sherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Live and local from Philadelphia. Free speech lives here. 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 It's Kale and Company on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. And away we go, live on this Tuesday, March 26th. It is indeed Kale and Company, right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. We are always live on the free Odyssey app, and of course streaming live for your video viewing pleasure on YouTube. As we head until 10 o'clock this morning, 855-839-1210, the phone number on social media at 1210 WPHT. I am at Nick Kale, K-A-Y-A-L. Don Stenzel with the news. Greg Stocker, the chairman of the board. Phil Omquist, Anthony Dorenzo, our associate producers. Action-packed Tuesday today. Oh, do we have a lot of good stuff to get into. Don, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Gregory. Bridges collapsing. Diddy on the loose. Colbert apologizing for jokes at MSNBC. Still not over the hiring of Ryan. Ronald McDaniel. Good morning, sir. How are you? I am well, and that covers the show. So with that, further ado. <laughs> yeah, we're going everybody. home. Good night, Bye-bye. everybody. That was a hell of a take. Sorry. Woo! Got to start was... strong, buddy. Yeah, you're 602 right. right out of the gate. Let's go. You're right. Let's do this. Come so, on. Two days in a row. Listen to the jump this man has at 602. Woo! Yeah, which means I'm going to crash by 637. Once, you, once we get through the cut sheet, you can do whatever you want. We need you until the cut sheet. <laughs> we're through the cut sheet. We'll get to all of those stories, as Greg mentioned. Also, Florida is where social media for kids goes to die. Oh, my God. We'll get to that ban, see if that holds up. Also, Ghostbusters and racism. (laughs) Yeah, true story. Who are you going to (laughs) call? Plus, Legos is in the news. We will get to that uh, crazy story. For California and the criminal justice system, never thought I would put those two together. Loaded cut sheet. The big take this morning following yesterday's victories for Donald Trump. And also, speaking of Trump, Truth Social goes public today. We will get into that. And also, a story from Rolling Stone about Donald Trump and the 2024 election. That I, 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 I'm being dead honest here and completely serious. This is not a satire or parody headline, but we will get to it coming up in a little bit. Wait till you hear about this. But we have a ton, I mean a ton, of news to get to. Without further ado, the great Dawn Stensland at 603. And good morning, Kale and Company News Live on this Tuesday, March 26, 39 degrees. We do have a developing story with Philadelphia police investigating after gunfire rang out at a Philadelphia bus terminal. So Philadelphia police investigating a deadly double a double shooting. It happened in the city's Frankfurt section last night during the evening rush. Arrett Street at Septus Arrett Transportation Center. One man shot in the chest, rushed to the hospital where they could not save him in the emergency department. Then that second victim identified by police as a man shot once in the back, twice in his leg. He was rushed to Temple University Hospital in stable condition. We still don't know what sparked this. We have no arrests in this case. Police say a gun was recovered at the scene and nobody seems to be talking. Was it, what was the motive? Was it robbery, gangs, drugs? We don't know, which is too often the familiar tale. We have a dire emergency, that's the word, with people in the water as a ship struck Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge early this morning, causing this partial collapse. Divers searching for people, as many as 20 people in the water. This is 48-degree water. So it's not uh, good. I think we have not the, good. Video, the video feed is rolling on YouTube if you're it's, watching early. It's like my worst nightmare. 
like I'm sure it's everybody's worst nightmare, but every time you go over a bridge, this is what I imagine happening. Is Ugh. this what goes through your mind when you go across yeah. a bridge? Sometimes, yeah. My really? dad is my dad has a will actually when he travels mm -hmm. would avoid any bri big bridge like this. Okay. He what? has a, a fear of phobia. So it happened at like 1:30 yeah, this morning. Yeah, about 1:30 this morning. Now, I mean, I guess maybe I don't know. Is this a stupid question, uh, or maybe I'm just stupid? So you have these <laughs> boats. I mean, don't these boats have to? Now, was the boat too high and couldn't clear under, or did no, it hit I like one of the barriers? I think it hit one of the like sides. One of, of the supports, yeah, of oh, the, the Francis Scott yeah. Key Bridge. Jeez, and I've gone across that bridge. I mean, I, I I know that bridge quite well, having been to Baltimore many times. I will say there were a lot of already on the bridge. There were road crews. There was a lot of construction going on. Were they working when this happened? So you know? apparently so. Ugh. Apparently okay. so. So that's why they have even more people suspected of being in the water than usually Ugh. at that hour. Because you have some shift workers, right? Some truck drivers, that sort of thing. But multiple vehicles plunging from the bridge. Because you picture this huge vessel strikes one of the supports roadway breaks apart in several places and is just plunging to the water into the river there the ship then catches fire and sinks oh my goodness yeah and and then at this point you have all of these vehicles and all these people you know plunging into this frigid water so let me ask you a question because of the way the the freight tanker whatever it was hit I can see why the one side goes down, but why did why did both of them, like that looks like almost it it almost lo looks like an implosion. Like I'm not saying it is, but it like looks like like a detonation. Yeah, because like why would the second side go down? I just I mean I don't know how old that bridge is. I don't know how many updates they've done on it since it was first erected. I mean maybe it's just you know not able to withstand that that sort of force. Yeah. Yeah. Would be my guess. Because they said the road, like Greg is saying, it broke apart in several different spots. That was, it's mm. not just one area underneath the support. Interesting. So the hmm. dive teams are, it's active right now. So we're watching this very carefully. Did they have any sort of clue how many people are in the water? They said at least, uh, at least six. I heard one report that they believed at least six to seven. Another report, at least uh, 20 mm, so I'm mean, hearing God. multiple I mean that's a huge difference you're down there in a dive team these people yeah. these first responders are incredible I'm assuming that governor has already declared a state of emergency and that that'll oh, probably yeah. take I wonder you know obviously uh, you, you hope and pray for the the people that fell into the water but I'm just wondering I wonder how long that would take to rebuild a bridge like that I mean we, we gave DeSantis a lot of credit for what he reestablished in Florida two summers ago but that was a very very small bridge i mean this thing and, is and his credit shapiro here in philly mm -hmm. yeah yeah 95, 95. yeah yep because of new Th technology think of all of these disasters that have happened though i'm not trying to make this political but under pete Buttigieg's watch i mean this is this is a tragedy that that Sometimes you just can't avoid, but right. boy, there have been a lot of them haven't there yeah yeah i'm just mayor, saying you're mayor pete you just need a vacation Poor guy. That's true. Wow. Speaking of, since you're we're on this topic, uh, SEPTA Regional Rail has SEPTA announced that their regional rail issues have been resolved for this morning's commute after a signaling problem caused delays. So unfortunately, the issues started at 5:20 last night, and that's when people, you know, that's when this struck. So what happened with a signaling issue? What does that mean as far as what is a, a computer type issue? They said it started at the Wayne Junction station in Germantown and caused that domino impact as the regional rail network was impacted at least 13 regional rail train lines. Obviously, this impacted thousands of people whose evening commute last night had suffered major delays many, many hours mm. for uh, thousands across our region because of the domino impact. So we're following that one for you. And the other headlines, I'll just headline this because I know that it went out in social media last night. But responding to, to those 
reports of raids at homes belonging to musician and producer Sean Diddy Combs yesterday. Department of Homeland Security Investigations has confirmed it had executed law enforcement actions as part of some kind of ongoing investigation. Yeah, I was I was tracking this in real time. This is fascinating, right? So you have the Department of Homeland Security or National uh, Homeland Security. They raid his uh, Florida home in Miami and his L.A. home. Raw alerts, if you follow them on Twitter, said they were tracking a flight where Diddy flew from, I believe, one of his properties, but they're not confirming, at least I saw as of last night, that he was on the flight and it was his chartered flight going to the Caribbean. This is like O.J. Simpson getting on the 405 in the Bronco. Yeah. So, like you're saying, they used Homeland Security as well as local law enforcement, Florida, California. But part of the allegation here of what they're investigating, transnational crime and threats, including human trafficking. Yeah. Well, there's there's always kind of been these these rumors out there that he's kind of in that same circle, allegedly. I'll use that word, allegedly, like R. Kelly was. Um, so I don't know what's going on with this, but you know, my first thought was, who's he taking the fall for? Is is, is he the ringleader of this, or is there some? Is he about to get Epstein? Honestly, think about that. He could end up in the in in the in the joint, mm. just like the rest of these nut jobs in Hollywood. And headlining the other one, this broke 11.20 a.m. yesterday. New York appeals court judge agreeing to slash that amount of bond for Donald J. Trump uh, to cover the $454 million civil fraud verdict while he appeals it, reducing it to one hundred. And and I laughed yesterday when they released it as breaking news because NBC News, ABC, they said they reduced it to just $175 million oh, yeah. to just... Yeah. You know, because that's like easy cash in the right. drawer. Yeah, it's, it's like me buying a, st- <laughs> a steak sandwich at a local eater. Oh it's goodness. just 12 bucks. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> the full forecast today, we are still looking at mild temperatures. Watching very carefully Thursday, because Thursday, rain showers. It's going to rain on Thursday for our big opening our big opening day, Citizens they, Bank Park, 20 years later. They mm-hmm. need to uh, They need to call this game. I mean, Friday's going to be... Why do they be, wait so long? Friday's going to be beautiful. Seriously, just call the game because people need to make other plans. Yeah. Yep, I agree. It's a day game. Make it a doubleheader on Friday. It's and not... Then, or yes. They're not playing on Friday. Oh, so, okay. So it's right, just right. Be Thursday, a, Saturday, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, they, they leave Friday open for, for these, uh, for these yeah. sort of situations. So you, you gave your... Your players that extra day of buffer, yeah. let them use it. I say we just, this should be the permanent rule of baseball. I think I said this yesterday. All teams on the East Coast, they spend the first three weeks of April out on the West Coast. Unless you're playing a team in a dome. Yeah. So you can avoid this. Because the weather stinks until after like the second or third week of April around here. Yeah, it just, I think it's a timing issue. So 52 degrees, mostly sunny today. Tomorrow, 54. That's when the rain moves in. Tomorrow, and so it, it rains overnight. So at what point does the rain end? So I think that they'll make the call either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, like, the, come on. Just the, just make the, the call. The is always wrong. Yeah, what is Brazier doing? Let's go. <laughs> he's watching. He's being wise. He's done this a few times. <laughs> yeah. It's not his first rodeo, yeah, right? That's right. Because as Greg said, Friday, 55 degrees, bright, sunny skies. And then Saturday, 59 degrees, mo- uh, partly sunny. Easter Sunday, 60 degrees. Nice. Very, yeah, beautiful Easter forecast, 60 degrees. So you have that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, very nice sunny stretch. But unfortunately, Thursday opening day on the 28th, it's a 70 plus percent chance of showers and 51 degrees with at least 20 plus mile an hour winds. Mm. Not a great day. No. Kale Company News Live. All right, Dawn, thank you very much. Uh, 614 Tuesday morning. Let's get to another big take. The Big Take on Kale and Company. All right, The Big Take brought to you by United Tire. The twists and turns of the Trump trials. Another day, another day in the court for Donald Trump. Monday was another temporary victory for the 45th president of the United States and another unforeseen snag for those trying to take down the Republican nominee. 
while Donald Trump and his legal team are fighting tooth and nail to delay these kangaroo courts until after the election. It's a stark reminder how great our court system can actually be. Appeal. The appeals process appellate courts. They have been a blessing for Trump and anybody fighting injustice in the court system. Yesterday was a perfect illustration of appellate courts being willing to rein in this trial court absurdity. Trump's $454 million judgment bond was slashed by more than half in yesterday's appeals court ruling. Donald Trump telling the judge that he would abide by the appeals decision. Trump must pay the now reduced $175 million within the next 10 days. And if Trump does post the $175 million by the new deadline, it would effectively block Letitia James from attempts to seize his assets as he continues to appeal the judgment by New York Judge Arthur Engeron. Here was Trump walking out of court yesterday with the victory. Listen and watch this. Thank you very much. Judge Engeron has done a terrible disservice to the state of New York. What he's done is terrible. Business is a fling. And you see that? We just released a statement on truth. Businesses are fleeing and crime is flourishing all over the state. And what he's done is such a disservice and should never be allowed to happen again. New York State is being battered by his decision. So I greatly respect the decision of the appellate division. And I'll post either $175 million in cash or bonds or security or whatever is necessary uh, very quickly within the 10 days. And I thank the appellate division for acting quickly. But Judge Engoran is a disgrace to this country, and this should not be allowed to happen. Thank you very much. Would you accept more money and pay the bond? It's been a pretty good last four days for Donald Trump. He goes from owing almost half a billion dollars to now $175 million. This after finding out on Friday that his shares of Truth Social, which goes public today, are worth approximately $3 billion. So how is the left handling the appellate ruling of yesterday? Well, let's check in on MSNBC as they are having a meltdown over Trump's appeals process victory. Listen and watch this. And I, honestly, this is so infuriating, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know if I care what the process is that these judges are arriving at. Whatever it is, it's flawed. I can tell you that much. I mean, D David put it well. It's This is a different process for, for, for this person. We have decided that he gets his own private court of justice. He has a private plane. He has, a, he has private clubs that he lives in. You know, apparently, you know, he, he basically fashioned himself his own private militia to try to take over the Capitol. You know, now he's getting uh, his own private system of justice. This is an absolute travesty. It would not happen for anybody else. Anybody else, it would be like, sorry, buddy, you lost. Pay up. For him, he gets his own set of rules. Oh, Tristan Snell, cry me a river, a grown man throwing a temper tantrum over something that doesn't affect or impact him personally. What do you mean he gets his own set of rules? Anybody in a court that doesn't like the ruling or verdict has the right to appeal. It's not a Donald Trump thing. It's the way our court systems work. And also, by the way, Trump has the money to fight it. That's the way the legal system has always been. The best defense money can buy. Was Tristan crying over OJ and the Dream Team because OJ Simpson could afford five highly priced attorneys? And let's not talk about own sets of rules. All the rules have been thrown out in this fiasco against Trump. Countless, untested, fringe, legal theories, statutes of limitations that have expired, all thrown in Trump's direction with prosecutors and attorney generals and judges just hoping something sticks. Campaign promises to get him, which, by the way, are illegal. Clearly, Tristan was upset yesterday. So why are the Democrats, the Biden administration, and the DOJ doing all of this? Well, Trump says it's because they can't beat him legitimately. Listen and watch this clip. They can't win an election because of the borders, because of energy prices, because of... Uh, inflation because of Afghanistan, the worst and most embarrassing day in the history of our country. He can't win because of 
Russia, 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 because of all the problems, because of Ukraine being attacked by Russia. And he can't win because of the October 7th attack of Israel, which he should have never allowed to happen. Would have never happened if I were president. Ukraine would have never been attacked if I was president. And you wouldn't have inflation if I was president. We didn't have inflation. Um, so all of these things, so what they do is they do election interference, which is court cases, and uh, let's try and tie him up, and let's take as much of his money as possible. I- Fox News legal analyst Jonathan Turley tweeting the following thread yesterday after the ruling, saying, quote, The New York Court of Appeals has finally intervened to offer a modicum of restraint in the Trump case. It has given former President Donald Trump 10 more days to post a bond of $175 million that is likely doable and avoids the cliff drop set up by Engeron and James. Both Engeron and James would have gained greater credibility if they recognized the obvious unreasonableness of the original demand. While still a massive bond lift, it should be attainable for Trump to allow for the review of Engeron's controversial ruling. For those looking for a thrill-kill moment at midnight, this will be a disappointment. Hopefully, the appellate court will restore a degree of objectivity and restraint missing on the trial level. The true sunk costs of this controversy are likely borne by Democrats who have been seen as engaging in raw lawfare, turning the New York legal system into an inescapable political vortex is repellent for many citizens and companies alike. Although, there was also more news yesterday with cases involving Donald Trump in New York. The Stormy Daniels-Alvin Bragg hush money case, some bad news dealt to Donald Trump, as that case will officially begin on April 15th, and it will begin with jury selection in just under three weeks. And this will cement the fact that this will be the first of Trump's four criminal indictments to go to trial. Trump faces 34, as I like to call it, copy and paste felonies per the indictment. But I've arrived at this conclusion that other than the Alvin Bragg $130,000 payment case, none of these cases are going to conclude before the election. And I do think the clock will run out due to Trump's right to appeal, even though that upsets Tristan on MSNBC. And it remains to be seen how all of these court cases will ultimately conclude. But if you're scoring at home, Trump has made it very, very difficult in all of these cases as he fights for his freedom his assets, and his ability to campaign for a second term. And that's The Big Take. The Big Take on Kale and Company. All right, Big Take brought to you by United Tire. United Tire and Service is a pot of gold waiting for you. Now through April 2nd, all tires are on sale, plus extra savings on $80 on all Michelin tires and an instant $40 from United Tire. Visit unitedtire.com. Don't drive alone. Drive United. We'll get your thoughts and reaction if you want to jump in yesterday from what happened with Trump and that number being slashed to one hundred and seventy five million. Eight five five eight three nine twelve ten on social media at twelve ten WPHT and of course in the YouTube chat. We'll get to that when we come back. It's Kale and Company live on this Tuesday morning on Talk Radio twelve ten WPHT. But first a word from my friends at the Piazza Auto Group. Just six weeks ago, we dropped the debut episode of Kale Pool Karaoke, and we filmed that premiere episode in a 2024 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. What an awesome SUV, luxury, all the accessories, the bells and the whistles, the amenities, and oh, by the way, great for off-roading. It is rugged. It'll handle all sorts of different terrain. Comes with a seven-mode drive system, trail watch, multi-camera view. 18-inch alloy wheels and wireless Apple CarPlay, and the luxury and the accessibility of third-row seating. You can explore this model as well as all of the other variations at one of the five Piazza Honda locations in Philadelphia, Pottstown, Reading, Springfield, and Langhorn, or shop all their inventory, piazzaautogroup.com. Steamfitters Local Union 420 is a proud 120-year-old labor organization. We have been providing the emerging life science industry with the safest and most highly skilled steamfitters, welders, and HVAC service techs. Our members have been trained in all aspects of the life science industry so that our orbital welding and clean room procedures exceed the industry standard. Contact Steamfitters Local Union 420 for all your life science needs and visit our website for more information at lu420.com. 
When it comes to your home or business, Bradford White knows hot water is not optional. It's essential each and every day. That's why Bradford White makes water heaters that are built to be the best. With innovative features like our exclusive microban antimicrobial technology that helps protect and keep the tank clean and extends the life of the water heater for top performance 24-7. How you heat your water matters, so choose the proven reliability of Bradford White. Learn more at BradfordWhite.com. Are you a caregiver that lives in Delaware County? The Delaware County Link to Aging and Disability Resources presents the 2024 Caregiver Academy Series. Join us for a series of meaningful, activity-focused information sessions on respite care for your loved ones. Presentations take place on April 9th, April 23rd, May 7th, May 21st, June 4th, and June 18th at the Good Neighbor Senior Center in Sharon Hill, PA from 4 p.m. till 5.30 p.m. Call 484-540-0372 to register today. At Cherry Hill Volvo, an XC40 can be leased for as low as $459 and an XC90 leased for as low as $629. Interest rates are as low as 4%. Along with Volvo-sponsored incentives, the Cherry Hill Volvo offers are very aggressive. When purchasing or leasing a new Cherry Hill Volvo, special additional incentives will be given. Spring into Cherry Hill Volvo now for these incredibly fabulous offers. It's a Joe Conklin Comedy Show fundraiser at the Church of the Incarnation in Mantua, New Jersey. We're raising money to send altar server Christina McNasby to the shrine at Lourdes in France. 24 years old, she's been going through a lot. Her faith is steadfast. She's an unbelievable parishioner. Christina is in pain quite often. All she has to say is she's offering up that pain to the Lord. And get her to Lourdes, and we're going to do that with your help. The Benefit Comedy Show for Christina McNasby, Saturday, April 20th. Get tickets at JoeConklin.com. I'm Benjamin L. Chavis Jr. with the good news brought to you by BetterHelp. The Biden Harris administration is now reporting a remarkable surge in new business applications. The good news is that the foundation of the American economy is the strength and progress of small businesses. During the past year, over 5.5 million new small businesses have been started in the United States. What's the first thing you'll do if you have more time in the day? Nap, read, talk with a friend? Knowing what's important to you, it's easy to fit it into your schedule. Therapy can help you figure that out. BetterHelp offers affordable online therapy. Start the process in minutes and switch therapists anytime. Visit BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash good news to get 10% off of your first month. That's the good news. I'm Benjamin F. Chavis Jr. on the USBC Network brought to you by BetterHelp. Texting privacy policy and terms and conditions posted at renofi.com slash notices. Texting enrolls for recurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop, opt out. John, I'm putting my foot down. We can't put off renovating this house any longer. Our kitchen is so small. We need to finish the basement for the kids and don't even get me started on the bathrooms. Honey, renovating is so expensive. We can't do all those projects. With Renofi, we can. What's Renofi? Renofi loans are a new type of home equity loan only for homeowners doing renovations. We can get up to $500,000 and keep our existing low mortgage rate locked in. With Renofi? Renofi, we can do everything on our renovation list and we don't have to refinance? That's right. Renofi loans are the only home equity loan that use the after-renovation value. Just what we need. How do we get started with Renofi? Just send them a text. Text BASEMENT to 323232 and see if you qualify for up to $500,000 to renovate your home with Renofi. Unlock the future value of your home right now to get the money you need without refinancing. Text the word BASEMENT to 323232 to get started today. Text BASEMENT to 323232. NMLS number 1802847. Not all borrowers or properties qualify. Loan terms apply. Hey, Joe DeCamera here. Isn't it time to invest in yourself? Well, how about this? Start a PI Dental Center with decades of experience in complex dental treatment, and I've been a patient of PI Dental for 20 years. Dr. Glenn Wolfinger and Dr. Robert Slau, they're board-certified prosthodontists. They specialize in the restoration and replacement of teeth, and PI Dental Center are the originators of the teeth in a day. It's a revolutionary treatment that delivers fixed teeth and implants placed for a dramatic transformation in a mere one day. So visit PIDentalCenter.com. That's PIDentalCenter.com to request your new patient evaluation. Get slimmer for the summer by losing a contractually guaranteed 20 to 40 plus pounds in only 40 days with NJ Diet. Call 855-5NJ Diet or go to njdiet.com. Get ready for spring with njdiet.com. Free speech lives here with Rich Zioli. Afternoons 3 to 7. Talk Radio 1210. WPHT. Yeah, 
Daily Company, 6.30. As we continue, welcome back in. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Nick, Don, and Greg here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. We have so much to get to this morning. Going to be a good show. Uh, but we begin this morning with the big take on Donald Trump and his victory yesterday in court as uh, what he owed slashed from you know, depending on what source you look at, 464 million, 454 million. I like to just, uh, I've seen as high as 550 some million. So we'll just call it a half billion. We'll give it a flat number. And that was slashed to $175 million to the point where people on mainstream media, they, they couldn't process it. Tristan Snell that I played for you in the big take is supposed to be an expert. And he thinks Trump is getting preferential treatment and he's upset that well trump owns buildings and properties and mansions and he's got planes and yachts yeah he's got a right to appeal i mean anybody in a criminal or a civil court of law has the right to take advantage of the appellate review process and that is exactly what donald trump is doing don i know you were um on the air as this was unfolding in real time yesterday with trump in court uh your thoughts and takeaways from uh yesterday's discounted rate I think I'm not, first of all, I'm not surprised by it because there were so many officials and experts who said that this is not unusual that you would have, because in in essence, we've never really seen, you know, half a billion dollar bond like this is insane. Mm -hmm. It's historic. So uh, I know that ahead of it over the weekend, I had heard several experts say from something even smaller, it would not be unusual mm-hmm. to lower something such as this. So it also is a sign to me that the appellate court views it like we all do, that this is insane. Yeah. This is this is a huge amount of money. It's unprecedented. And it's, you know, it's it's just, I'll just leave it there. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm thankful that there's some sanity. I mean, it's it's still crazy and surreal to me. It's still this an exorbitant happening. amount yeah. of money. I don't care how wealthy you are, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you could be Elon Musk rich. I, I've got to imagine 175 million. You feel that, right? Like that's, you know, I know Elon Musk lost 22 billion, so to speak, on his purchase uh, of Twitter. Remember, you know, he bought it for 44 billion dollars, lost 22 billion dollars. But I've always said, wealthy people stay wealthy because they value not losing money, right? Like, you know, Trump, no matter how much he cashes in on truth, I think his net worth, according to Bloomberg yesterday, the report came out with the sale of truth. Trump is now, once again, one of the world's 500 richest people, and his net worth is $6.5 billion. Um, Truth Social goes public today uh, on the stock market, and it will take Trump probably six months until he can you know, liquidate and get this cash. But once he does, I mean, let's, you just do the math, 175 million into into 4 billion. It's not a huge dent, but you still feel it for sure. It was so interesting the other day. And I apologize. I wish I could remember. It was somebody who's known Trump for years, covered, covered him and, and, and was reporting on this, but somebody who's covered him for years and knows him and is not necessarily a friend per se, but said th- said something to the effect of, first of all, you got to understand this guy has, and I'm paraphrasing because somebody might be driving the kiddies to school, but this guy has uh, quijones of steel and he always, something, he's the luckiest guy. Something will happen. And sure enough, that this was ahead of Friday's vote mm-hmm. that teed up what you're talking about with True Social right. going public. But the fact that, you know, you you mentioned, Nick, you know, part of wealthy individuals like this, part of it is the, the risk. Somebody who can take that risk that and face a risk. And there's a lot of risk in everything he has done, even running for president as a conservative. He's, clearly, he's, clearly that that apparently if you're a billionaire and you announce yourself as a conservative and or he, not that he's a full conservative, but as a Republican, mm-hmm. sort of a Reagan-esque, you know, moderate conservative. But that's a huge risk in America today. He's the first ever president in the modern era of American politics yeah. that has lost money being the president of the United States. Look at all of these guys that go into the position, and when they leave office after four or eight years, look at their projected net worth. 
Obama was far more wealthy when he walked out. Bill Clinton, G.W. Bush, on down the list. Trump's the only guy to take a hit yeah. to his bottom line as a president. And to, you know, and to your point, the only guy who was, you know, look at the others, community organizers, uh, political, you know, career politicians, if you will. He's somebody who was never a politician, yeah. was never an elected official, is a business guy. And apparently if you're that businessman, especially a billionaire businessman, and God forbid you're not part of the partisan swamp and you run for office with an R behind your name, you better be ready yep. for the risk. There's no doubt about it. Hey, Nick, I'm just kidding. There's a break. There's breaking news out of, out of Baltimore real quick here. What do we have? They, the, uh, the chief of there, James Wallace, just spoke a second ago. He says two people, they've, they've been able to rescue two people from the water, one of them taken to the hospital in stable condition but serious. The other one refused treatment, and he's wow. fine. Okay. So they believe they still have seven in the water, and they're using every, they have people, come, first responders from the region coming by air in the water on that ship that went down. And so, but they, thank God, they were able to get two immediately out of the water, divers still in there. And they, and they're, this is not, this is not a, a recovery. This is a rescue. They believe they have seven people still alive in the water. And if I recall earlier, you said the water temperature was 48 degrees? 48. Okay. I mean, not so, not, not frigid to the point where you're going to get hypothermia and die, but certainly cold. I don't want to be in 48 degree water, I'll tell you that much. When, when, when you think about this story, though, I was just thinking about this when we were doing the news uh, 35 minutes ago. Would you, I don't even know, this is just the way my brain thinks. When you're on that bridge... And you are either in a vehicle as just a pedestrian driving by or if you're working on those road crews, I would think, wouldn't it be better off if when that bridge collapses that you're a worker just kind of out there standing because now um, rather than being in a car and being submerged and, and with the pressure of the water and. I mean, I don't know. Can you even open your door underwater? Like, I would think you'd want to be a construction person, honestly. And then the other question is. How many individuals were on the vessel? Remember, oh, the vessel true. sunk immediately. So they have, this is a multi prize over a large area because they have people they believe were in the, that could be trapped. Was that just a cargo vessel? Or was that, was that with, I mean, and I know it wasn't a cruise ship, but was there a, more than just a few civilians on that on that boat that's i i don't i don't know that information okay. wow. i i know that they're saying i mean they have the number seven so they know especially from the two two guys they rescued they know how many guys yeah were doing the construction work then they know if there were any other vehicles impacted by it and then they know how many people were on that that cargo ship so it's, it's amazing, though, those divers were able to immediately get two people out of the water. It is. 855-839-1210 if you want to jump in. I always think about this, too. Like, if I'm in a car and a bridge collapse or you fall, you know, you go into it, do you immediately, as soon as you know what's happening, open the door and jump out? Do you open your windows? What's oh, the... What's I the mean, in, in real time in that split second, probably tough to think that quick on the fly i mean i don't know how quickly it would take for that bridge to collapse and for you to because when a when a vehicle hits the water yeah. it it doesn't immediately go down no it bobs like a cork yes right so you you do have a little time to get out hopefully yeah. hopefully yeah bob on twitter says uh sounds like they didn't wake the president for the bridge collapse now joe's still sleeping but they did pete Buttigieg. judge they is has been alerted said that the feds would help uh, governor declared an emergency, mm-hmm. but yeah, I'm not hearing anything about Biden. Wow, twenty crew and two pilot. Twenty crew, they're okay. That's what Navy Prepper is saying on YouTube. Okay. Initially, that was the number I said. It's six. I heard twenty. So they, thank God they do. It sounds like they have survivors here, as far as those who were still on the bridge. Depending on where it fell, it's the the video is unbelievable that you showed. Yeah, you know earlier NBC had it. You know, they have all these different cameras from buildings, and it's... Uh... I mean, it, the way it separates there, and, I mean, you see the the far right end of it go vertical after it, you know, separates. That's got to be, my God, it's got to be at least 70 yards okay, long let's, where let's, that chunk collapses. Let's pull into this. Uh... All right, we're going to go to the press conference. <laughs> Fire Chief Wallace. Baltimore officials call an unspeakable tragedy. A container ship, mm-hmm. a large container ship there crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, 
We had a video of it. We've been showing you all morning long. We now know at least two people mm -hmm. have been recovered. Very crucial One crucial that was very serious condition. The other one uninjured. Yes. Because there were cars on the deck of that uh, bridge when it collapsed. Thank God it wasn't rush hour when it happened, right? And yeah. Potentially workers, too, as many as seven 140. people are looking for. Yeah, and now we want to go to NBC 10's Matt's. Okay. I mean, you think about it. It's probably, if there's ever, a, you know, the best time, I mean, based on the least amount of uh, human life being on that bridge. Exactly. 140 in the morning is probably it. Yeah. What's amazing, the, the one individual who is not injured refused any treatment so I, I it sounds i'm inferring from what chief wallace the fire chief said that individual is now assisting in the rescue these wow. are his buddies yeah that's a tough dude right there <sighs> now i'm good i'm gonna go yeah. help my, find my guys yep. there you go 855-839-1210 all right we'll come back put a bow on the six o'clock hour i'll give you the opening listing price for truth social and then rolling stone with the headline of all headlines and it's not satire it's not parody. The headline reads for RollingStone.com, Joe Biden is building a superstructure to stop Donald Trump from stealing the election. We'll get to that when we continue. It's Kale and Company, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. It's that time of year, springtime, when we need to think about the lawn. Before you know it, yeah, the grass is going to be overgrown with weeds, taking away from the beauty of your home. Swing into spring with Natural Lawn of America's Safer Lawn Care Treatments. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, with fewer weeds for more than 35 years now. So my Natural Lawn guy already came by, and I'll have to read you what I have. You know, they give you the diagnosis. Uh, here's what you've got. It's, you know, it's like the doctor's diagnosis. They tell you what's going on and tell you the remedy. And my, so my soil needed a little help, too. You know, the lawn needs a little help. It was a rough winter. So this is not a one-size-fits-all lawn care company. That's what I'm talking about. Natural Lawn Certified Specialists, they tailor the treatments to your lawn's specific needs. And they use exclusive organic-based fertilizers and safer weed and insect controls, which give you the results you want and peace of mind that you deserve. Locally owned, family operated right here in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Natural Lawn is competitively priced and has a satisfaction guarantee. They're great people to work with. I've worked with them for years now. So just get started today. Take advantage of their limited time offer now. Free seeding every year. Schedule Natural Lawn's full service program. Get free seeding every year. 800 free seed. Visit naturallawn.com. Naturallawn.com. Trust the leader in organic-based lawn care. Natural Lawn of America. Greener grass, fewer weeds, guaranteed. Tell Dawn sent you. Although you try not to, most of us have used an ATM out of network. And at the end, you get that notice that it's going to cost you $4 extra. Are you kidding me? So you're paying money to get your own money. It makes you crazy. In retirement, you're going to want to use that 401k. But every time you dip into it, you have to pay taxes. Here we go again. You have to pay money to get your own money. Oh, come on! Jim Cipriotti and the Retire Ready Financial Group believes that every retirement plan needs a tax plan. Without it, you're using Uncle Sam's plan. And do you really think that's going to work in your favor? Call Retire Ready Financial Group today at 610-894-7415. That's 610-894-7415 and schedule a complimentary retirement consultation. Or you can find them online at retirereadyfg.com. Investment advisory services offered through Retire Ready Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. Insurance and annuities offered through James V. Cipriati, Retire Ready Financial Group, LLC, NPN number 2083768. Hi, this is Dom Giordano, Italia, my favorite destination in the world, Italy. It's called the Grand Event for good reason. Rome, Tuscany, Florence, Orvieto, Siena, Venice, Milan, and the Northern Italian Lakes region. 12 big days of touring, the kind of dining events that Conservative Tours Tour Company is famous for in Italy. 5371, that includes your airfare, the Colosseum, the Vatican, Treve Fountain, Piazza Navona. Fully escorted by my friends at Conservative Tours team in Italy, the Renzo, Romina, and Giuseppe. Call them toll free at 888-733-9494 or go to conservativetours.com. Tuscany beckons and it's a time to answer Florence, the history, the beauty, San Gimignano, bustling Siena, and then it's on to the grand finale, Venice, Milan, the pristine resort of Streza on Lake Maggiore, Bellagio 2, this fall in Italia. Ciao. Before your spa treatment. <laughs> 
mine. Stop it. Leave me alone. Give it to you. You just broke it. <sighs> this is your home after your spa. Relax. <laughs> Any questions? Stop it. Half price hot tubs. Hot tubs, swim spas, and outdoor furniture at the best prices. See us at halfpricehottubs.com. Hey, Jetta Camera here. Stop chasing that rainbow. United Tire and Service has a pot of gold waiting for you. Now through April 2nd, all tires are on sale. Plus, get an extra savings of $80 on any Michelin tires and an instant $40 from United Tire. That's $120 in savings on all Michelin tires. You don't even need to wear green. So skip or drive into St. Patrick's Day Savings at one of your 10 locally owned United Tire locations or go to unitedtire.com. That's unitedtire.com. Don't drive alone. Drive United. Hi, Stephanie from Emmons. Are you not loving your bathroom? Is the King's Throne looking a little outdated and run down? Let Emmons Design Specials design a bathroom that you will love and one that Emmons will redo in as little as one day. An affordable, maintenance free bathroom with little to no inconvenience to you and your family. With finance options available, there's really only one problem your bathroom will be so nice, your king may never want to come out. Call Emmons today at 856-885-6677 or visit us on our website at callemmons.com. Hey, Clementon. Yeah! We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. WPHT. Mustard. Kelly Company rolling on. It is 6.47 on this Tuesday morning. We will get to Ron DeSantis and the Florida social media ban for minors. That is coming up in hour number two. Also, when it comes to Pennsylvania for Donald Trump, it's not so much about Philadelphia. It's not so much about Pittsburgh. But for Biden and Trump in 2024, it will be about the bellwether counties. We will get to a very in-depth breakdown of that coming up before we get to the cut sheet this morning. Uh, But just to put a bow on the Trump stuff for the first hour, uh, as I mentioned before the break, Truth Social will officially go public today when the market opens. Uh, Donald Trump had a roughly 60% stake in the company, and once he is able to uh, get the cash for those shares, which are locked up for six months, it'll be close to the tune of $4 billion dollars. And if you're wondering what Trump's uh, platform, Truth Social, will go for in the stock market, shares of Digital World were up 35% yesterday to $49.95 per share. And Truth Social will begin trading at that price today, $49.95 per share. Truth Social will have a market value of roughly $6.8 billion when it begins trading today, a staggering valuation for a company That has had about $5 million in sales, yet tens of millions of dollars in losses since its launch in 2021. Now, that being said, I am no financial advisor, nor am I giving any financial advice. But if you look at the way Trump has been in the polls, you look at the way his sneakers did in the initial like listing price to buy them and what they're reselling for. I don't know. Like if you're if you got a couple hundred bucks to toss around. Do you buy a few shares of Truth Social, knowing that everything that Trump deals with in this politicized, persecuted way that he's dealing with all these different trials? Do you try to turn a quick profit on Truth Social? Be interesting to see how people uh, evaluate that $50 per share. But let me wrap up with this headline. And I can't believe this is really a headline coming from Rolling Stone. Joe Biden is building a superstructure to stop Trump from stealing The election. Let me read you just a few excerpts of this story. They go on to say Trump and his MAGA allies have been working for years to pre rig the 2024 election. For years, Donald Trump has made it abundantly clear that if he doesn't win in 2024, he is willing to cheat and steal it. Since President Joe Biden's inaugural address, according to sources with intimate knowledge of the situation, Biden and his inner circles have been drawing up meticulous plans and creating a large legal network focused on wargaming a close election finish. The ex-president and many of his influential allies were already busy plotting ways to tilt the election in his favor. 
numerous Democratic lawmakers, operatives, Biden campaign advisors, and administration officials tell Rolling Stone that if the president does ultimately beat Trump this November, the election will be exceedingly close. And I agree right there. I think this is going to be a super, super close election. But over the past year, Team Biden has been conducting war games, crafting complex legal strategies, and devoting extensive resources to prepare for, as one former senior Biden administration official puts it, all hell breaking loose scenarios. Quote, President Biden has been worried for a while now that Donald Trump is going to try to steal the election if it's very close on Election Day, says a source familiar with Biden's thinking. Let me let me just go through this. And, And maybe I'm misinterpreting what Rolling Stone or the Biden administration is claiming. So it's Donald Trump that's going to try to steal an election. Let me ask you something. How does a Republican in today's world steal an election? Think about this. You know, he has said, and Trump has said, that Democrats are going to do this to him again. And they're doing it right now through the process of election interference with the court system. But I want people to think about all these chaos scenarios. In 2017, 2018, and 2019, where was the chaos? I don't think the chaos came from Donald Trump. I think the chaos came from manufactured chaos, manufactured drama from the mainstream media, from Democrats with hoax after hoax, Russia collusion on down the list. And then we had more chaos in his fourth year in 2020 with COVID. But think about the the advantage or advantages that Democrats enjoy in the United States of America when it comes to politics. They probably have a 10 to 1 media bias coverage advantage with the sheer number of outlets that position things in favor of Democrats and the left. They have big tech in their corner, minus X. Every other social media platform skews hard left. Democrats control two-thirds of the power right now in the United States, and the one-third that Republicans have We now have a one-seat advantage. It's razor, razor thin. And oh, by the way, the amount of people that usually get their news from non-credible sources is astounding. So I asked the question, how can Donald Trump or any Republican rig an election or steal in an election? I, I thought this was like the Babylon Bee. I thought this was satire and parody. But the Democrats are actually to the point now where They say they are preparing and they have been prepping for years behind closed doors for Trump to steal an election. That that's that's some next level. I don't know if this is a planted story. I don't know if they're really plotting this, if they really believe that. But Republicans, how does a Republican steal an election? I want everybody to think about that this morning. I mean, we don't take advantage of ballot harvesting legally. Republicans hate mail in balloting. So what what modality out there exists for Republicans to gain any sort of advantage? 855-839-1210. I don't see it. So I saw this story and I'm just like, what in the world are they talking about? How could Trump or any Republican steal an election? We'll come back. We'll kick off hour number two. Don will have some news and then we will get to this ban. I got to tell you. There's part of me that likes protecting the youth of America, especially with their mental health. But I tell you what, we need more parents and less government. Disagree with DeSantis on this social media ban. We'll get to that story as we continue. Hour two is next. Nick, Dawn, and Greg here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Spring cleaning is upon us, but there's one meaningful box that you don't throw away when cleaning out your closet. It's the box filled with your family's important videotapes, film reels, and photos. Hi, I'm Adam Baselogger. And I'm Nick Mako. We started Legacy Box over a decade ago to help families organize and update their analog media to digital. Legacy Box is simple and easy. It works and is safe. Over a million families have trusted Legacy Box. And Legacy Box has been featured in Good Housekeeping, The Today Show, and Rachel Ray. Legacy Box is like magic, converting your shoebox of memories to the cloud or thumb drive, ready to watch and share. Declutter your closet by digitizing your media. Become more organized and accomplished, knowing your family's recorded past is safe forever. Take advantage of our spring cleaning sale going on now. It's the easiest task to check off your to-do list. For a limited time, you can get started for just $9 a tape. Visit LegacyBox.com slash value to get our $9 sale. That's LegacyBox.com slash value to get our $9 offer. 
LegacyBox.com slash value. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes. And further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. This is a consumer warning. Countless financial shows have promised the peace of mind that comes only with a crash-proof retirement. Yet time and time again, the claims of these firms are revealed as nothing more than deception. The imitators never last, but their hollow promises have caused irreparable financial damage that continues to plague investors to this day. Don't be fooled by the copycats. No other firm has access to the proprietary crash-proof retirement system that provides market-like returns credited as interest with no market risk or fees to over 5,000 clients through all economic conditions. So when you hear other firms marketing a financial x-ray, beware. Only crash-proof retirements, financial MRI, provides the 44-step in-depth forensic analysis needed to expose the dangers hidden within your portfolio. Be with the originators. Tune in to the one and only crash-proof retirement show, which continues to outlast all financial radio programs as it has for over 15 years. Saturday at 11 a.m. right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. A new study has found that tobacco exposure before birth and beginning to smoke in childhood or adolescence have significant associations with developing type 2 diabetes as an adult. The risk is greater if a person with a high genetic predisposition for type 2 diabetes is exposed to tobacco in early life, which can increase the risk by more than 300 percent compared to someone with a low genetic predisposition and no tobacco exposure. Xiaowei Zhang of Shanghai Jiao Tong University was first author of this study. These findings didn't prove a causation between early life tobacco exposure and the development of type 2 diabetes. But the good news is that even those with early life tobacco exposure and high genetic predisposition can reduce their chances of developing type 2 diabetes by as much as 81% if they follow a healthy lifestyle later in life. The study was presented at the American Heart Association's Epidemiology, Prevention, Lifestyle, and Cardiometabolic Scientific Sessions 2024, sponsored by the American Heart Association. Hi, this is Joe Medercher, PNC Bank Regional President. PNC Bank, we're committed to making a difference in the lives of our customers and communities by helping them move forward financially. As a Main Street bank, we try to do right by our customers with every encounter. Our local teams offer personalized financial advice to help guide you in making the best decision. We're proud to be part of the Philadelphia, Delaware, and Southern New Jersey communities. PNC Bank, see how we can make a difference for you at PNC.com. PNC Bank, National Association, member FDIC. Feel like everything's clouded by doubt? Visit CaliforniaPsychics.com. Our psychics are available to talk 24-7, and we guarantee if it's not life-changing, it's free. Experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. Her words weren't written under peaceful shade, but under fear for her life. I don't think of all the misery, but of the beauty that still remains. The words of Anne Frank continue to fill us with hope. Hope. Pass it on from PassItOn.com. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in schools. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from PassItOn.com. WPHT, WPHT HD, WOGL HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Open that window and get a breath of fresh air. This spring, PJ Fitzpatrick has great deals to replace your leaky old windows with beautifully designed, budget-friendly, energy-efficient, American-made windows. 
PJ Fitzpatrick has a variety of financing packages that work with almost any budget. Plus, PJ Fitzpatrick provides peace of mind with a lifetime guarantee on materials and labor. You can have it all. Visit TrustPJ.com today for a free design consultation. That's TrustPJ.com today. Be sure to follow Talk Radio 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. You're a rich girl and you're gone too far because you know it don't matter anyway. You can rely on the old man's money. You can rely on the old man's money. It's a bitch girl, but it's gone too far because you know it don't matter anyway. Say money, money won't get you too far, get you too far. Billy Company, as we continue, hour number two, it is a Tuesday morning. Nick, Don, and Greg, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. What is on the cut sheet? You will find out coming up 745. Also, some good analysis on how Pennsylvania can be won if you are Donald Trump coming up this November. We'll get to that story. And also the social media ban for minors 14 and under in the state of Florida. But before we get to all of that, very, very busy morning in the world of news. And for that, we give you the great Dawn Stensland. And good morning. We are sponsored by Budget Blinds Kill and Company News Live. 39 degrees on this Tuesday, March 26. Major breaking news as divers are searching for survivors of that bridge collapse. This is Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, one spokesperson calling it a dire emergency a ship struck Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing that partial bridge collapse. Fire chief just gave a news conference. The mayor just spoke out. It appears they say a container ship struck the bridge early this morning, 1.35 a.m., causing that partial collapse, sending vehicles and people into the water. And so we have Baltimore City officials as well as regionally, and now federal help is coming in. Their governor there in Maryland declaring a state of emergency, Maryland Transportation Authority. They say that um, they are confirming this morning that this was a ship strike. So it appears to have been a what they called a container ship that struck one of the key supports of this Francis Scott Key Bridge. We've also been able to confirm that the ship actually caught fire and then appeared to sink. So the how many were in the crew of that container ship, that's a question. They've also said that there is diesel fuel in the water. Oh um, yes, so that's yep. there's a concern there. Yep. And we don't know what the cargo was as far as this container ship. That's another issue. And then we know that there were construction workers on the bridge pouring concrete at the moment that this happened. Oh, they're Man. showing right now some of the aerial footage on Fox, and you can still see pieces of the structure of the bridge that are, I, I don't know if that's floating in the water or if that's at the bottom of the water and still sticking up. I'm not sure how deep that body of water is there. By the way, is that the Chesapeake? What is that body of water? Do we know? No, I forget. I have to. It's a river. I have to. Okay. I, I'll get the pronunciation of the river. Okay. But it's um. They've rescued two people at least. One walked away from it perfectly. Refused any medical treatment. Says I'm fine. I'm helping out to get my. So I'm. So they have one rescued. One who was rushed to the hospital, seriously hurt. I don't have the official condition. Okay. We, have, we have some audio from the press conference if this you want to go Chief to Chief James Wallace, I believe. Is yep. Uh, uh, go, Phil. A, uh, a, a, ship, a, uh, a ship may have struck, may the, have key struck bridge. the key bridge. We got further information, got further through, information multiple through multiple calls that the key bridge, that the key bridge um, portions of the key bridge, um, had, actually the key bridge had actually collapsed. At about 0150 about hours, 150 our, first hours our first unit scene, arrived on scene and reported, and reported um, a, complete collapse, um, a complete collapse of the key bridge. Of the key bridge. Um, we were also um, given information, we were also at, given that information at that time that there were likely that multiple, there were likely people, multiple on bridge, people on the bridge at the, collapse, at the time of the collapse. And that, as a result, multiple, as a result, people, were multiple people were in the water. 
We were able to remove. We were able to remove uh, two people from uh, the two water. people from the water. One individual refused. One individual refused and refused service and refused transport. transport essentially, that person injured. was not injured. However, there was another. However, there was another individual that's been transported to a local trauma that center. Is in very serious that is in condition. very serious condition. At this time, at this time, we have multiple. We have air multiple assets air from assets the Maryland State from the Maryland State Police, as well as the Baltimore as well as the Baltimore Department. Police Department, as well as multiple as well as marine multiple assets marine assets from. Around the from region, around the region, including Baltimore City, including Baltimore City, Anne Arundel County, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, Baltimore as County, well as, multiple as well as multiple and local state police and state police uh, agencies, uh, uh, agencies, National Resources, uh, National Resources Police. Resources police. Uh, uh, BPD special ops BPD units special ops here. Maryland, here. State here. Police Maryland State here. Police is here. We have multiple resources. Multiple resources. Mm. Wow, you said it sank. Yeah, I just saw a picture of it that looked recent, and it looked like it was still there. Dawn. That's what they had reported. Yeah. So maybe it was a partial, maybe mm. it partially sank the, the container ship. Yeah. That mm. was what they said. And they were concerned of the crew. There was a huge semi that was a tractor trailer on the bridge at the time. Oh, boy. So that's, yeah. So we, we have a lot of factors here. Major search going on, and we're covering it. Breaking news this morning. Oof, man. Closer to home in Delaware County, crews expected to resume their search this morning for six-year-old Lanasia Brooker. This is in the Chester Creek. Creek. They were using a sonar device yesterday to scan underwater, uh, but could not find anything tragically. This is not considered, obviously, a, a rescue operation. It's a recovery hmm. of the six-year-old little girl. Little children were playing over the weekend, playing near the creek, and because of all the rain, looks like part of the, the creek side gave way, and she went tumbling in. There were two older kids nearby that rushed in and tried to, to save her and just simply could not get her in time. Just, a, a, just the community just grieving there over this entire situation. In Bucks County, Pennsylvania, suburbs of Philadelphia, filing a lawsuit yesterday against major oil companies, accusing the oil companies and alleging that the oil companies deceived the public for decades about fossil fuels role in climate change causing catastrophic impacts for the county so they're suing over severe weather and they filed in the common pleas court it's the first type of legal action for a county i i believe for any any municipality in pennsylvania i don't think we've seen any lawsuits such as this i know that We've seen this and reported on this in New Jersey, but I think this is a first by all accounts in Pennsylvania. It points to recent extreme weather and flooding in Bucks County, including um, it, about seven inches of rainfall in 45 minutes. You may recall last summer when at least seven people were swept away and died as a result of that flooding. Yeah. And so this lawsuit is is pointing the blame at major, essentially, fossil fuel oil companies. Have the Democrats brought in any cross-country skiers for expert uh, <laughs> testimony to confirm this? <laughs> Sorry, a little shades of our uh, Mr. Kennedy uh, climate change debacle yesterday. Yeah, I know. So it's, it, it, we'll have to go through this complaint. It's uh, not quite 200 pages, but... Uh, trying to connect those dots from oil companies, fossil fuel, blaming them on seven inches of rainfall. We'll have to look through the evidence, Nick Cale. Yeah. And, I'm going to uh, need some athletes track, to weigh in on this. Track that. <laughs> before I offer an official opinion. But, yeah, yeah I mean, it, it was a real tragedy. There were We had heard reports that there may be a lawsuit relating more so to the fact that they knew that, you know, this area flooded badly. I, I don't think anybody... It quite expected blaming climate change. Well, I was going to then... blame racism or Trump personally. <laughs> so we're following this one for you. And then we've been following the strange story of these multiple raids at homes belonging to musician and producer Sean Diddy Combs yesterday. Department of Homeland Security investigations confirming, and this is the New York based Homeland Security, they confirmed that they executed law enforcement actions as part of ongoing investigations and this led them to raids in los angeles as well as miami 
So two different coasts in Florida, as well as California, their investigation is leading them um, to transnational crime probes, as well as looking into alleged threats and alleged human trafficking. So those are some of the headlines that I'm just um, giving you the, the highlights or lowlights. No comment from Combs or anybody in his camp. Closer to home, a failure to communicate. Remember that movie, What We Have Here is a Failure to Communicate? <laughs> well, that's being blamed for quite a nightmare for commuters last night in our area. Trouble started around 5.30 p.m.-ish, delayed thousands of commuters for many, many hours. SEPTA officials say they were able to restore regional rail lines overnight. No problems reported this morning, but they say last night it was a switch and signal problem. Officials say the communication system malfunction impacted the ability of the signals to communicate with SEPTA dispatch with their center. And so trains as a precaution, as a safety precaution, were stopped immediately. Finally, the field personnel began manually throwing those switches. However, the domino effect caused those major delays impacting at least 13 regional regional rail train lines used by, as I say, thousands of people. So we don't have the, the root cause of this. And then the question, was it hacking? Was it just a technical glitch, a computer glitch? What are they blaming on this? And that one we're looking at very carefully. And of course, the headline this morning talking about Trump, Nick Kale's big take, talking about that appeals court in Manhattan, not offering any explanation by its decision to cut the money owed for that bond, nearly half a billion dollar bond cut to to about half that Trump now has 10 days to pay. And uh, as well, the Trump, the uh, the appeals court also halted other aspects of Justice Judge Ngoron's judgment in the Trump civil case, including ones that barred Trump and his sons from running companies in New York. Trump planning to adapt his presidential campaign, he says, to the schedule, to his Manhattan trial, and he's even expected to start giving news conferences from nearby Trump Tower. That's part of how he's adapting his presidential campaign to try to deal with now How will he deal with the upcoming mid-April trial in the so-called hush money trial? As well, the social media company begins publicly trading on the NASDAQ today under the stock symbol DJT. Per the New York Times, the former president's social media company officially became a public company yesterday morning in the process, the former president's net worth jumping by as much as $4 billion dollars. Nick Kale mentioned you might want to buy some stock, so we're looking that up. It uh, jumped 35%, and so per Mr. Trump's $79 million share, that means it's worth nearly $4 billion, but I believe the stock went up to, ended the day yesterday at $49.95 a share. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. So jumping that 35%. And don't take financial advice from me, folks, by the way. <laughs> if you've been following my college basketball picks, I couldn't pick a winner to save my life right now. So uh, proceed with caution. The other piece that's interesting, Nick Kale, as per your big take, if anybody missed it, you got to listen to Nick's big take. But he, uh, Trump would need the company's new board to remove a restriction preventing him from selling shares or using shares as collateral for the next six months. And that leads you to, well, who's on the board? He's not listed any longer on as a member of the company's new board, which is made up of loyalists to the former president. And so remember, he's not, this is interesting and an interesting revelation this morning because he was on the other board. Remember, he was restricted and Goran was trying to restrict him from doing business in New York. But on the newly created board, He's not even on the board. Well, you would probably love to get those that those shares in cash now as opposed to waiting for six months, considering yes. you have 10 days. But, I mean, I got to imagine he's – I think we have – I don't know if we have the clip. I saw the clip yesterday. As soon as he got done speaking, they were like, how do you pay, plan on paying the bond? And he just kind of turned back around because he was exiting the press conference, and he just said one word, cash. Yeah. So I, I'm assuming he's got 175 in cash. Yeah. Well, he's got 10 days to pay it. Yeah. 
And then the appeals court, again, uh, appeals court not giving any explanations. So we're following this very carefully for you this morning. So much happening as we think about budget blinds. Our sponsor, Springs Here, now's the time to budget. Budget Blinds is your one-stop shop for blinds, shades, shutters, custom drapery, motorization. Just visit budgetblinds.com for a free in-home consultation and the only no questions asked warranty in the entire business, budgetblinds.com. Your forecast, I think you're going to love it. Spring-like weather, of course, sunny skies today and low to mid-50s depending on where you are So we're looking at rain moving in for your tomorrow, still mid-50s. Thursday, opening day for baseball. It's our home opener and opening day for our Phillies. And so we're watching the forecast. Greg Stocker has said, why don't they just move it to Friday? That's Stocker's recommendation to the Phillies. But they're, I, I guess, waiting out the forecast. So if we look at this thing Thursday is the worst day of the week weather-wise, unfortunately, for opening day, 3.05 p.m. So 52 degrees for Thursday with seventy with a 70% chance of rain. Looks like the rain will be earlier in the day, but will the rain taper off and bring out the sun by 3.05 p.m.? Or maybe the Phillies will move it to Friday, 55 degrees, a very bright sunny day for your Friday. And then the weekend. 55 or 59 degrees for your Saturday with sunny skies. Easter Sunday, 60 degrees, sunny skies. So a beautiful Easter Sunday forecast in store. Kaling Company News Live. All right, Don, thank you very much. 855-839-1210 is how you climb in. Coming up next, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis now going to ban social media for minors 14 and under. As a parent, are you on board with the ban? We're back after this on Kale & Company on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Oh, I always get the my, my Piazza Honda updates, and I love their bonus offers at Piazza Honda and the Piazza Auto Group. There is power in Piazza, whether it's Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, and they continue to grow their luxury collection of brands. Piazza welcoming in two new members to the family of dealerships, Infinity Ardmore, Maserati of the main line as well, both located right there on Lancaster Avenue. You're going to receive the same first class customer experience that I know I've come to expect and know, and you should too, from the Piazza family of of automobiles. So find your new or certified pre-owned Infinity, Maserati, or other Piazza luxury brands like Jaguar, Land Rover, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and so much more. PiazzaPremiumAutos.com, P-I-A-Z-Z-A, PiazzaPremiumAutos.com. Tell Dawn sent you. This is Scott Trout of Cordell & Cordell. There are a lot of great dads out there. Sometimes those dads get divorced. For more than 30 years, we have represented men in divorce, confronting the pitfalls that could devastate your finances or harm your family relationships. While every situation is different, our goal is to get the best outcome for you and your kids. Set up a consultation and take the first step. Offices in Philadelphia, Radnor, and Allentown, Pennsylvania, and Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Scott Trout, licensed in Missouri, Illinois, and Georgia only. Michelle Ferrari, licensed in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Online at CordellCordell.com. Hey, it's Jesse Kelly. Are you still on the fence about owning gold? It's time to pull the trigger with the Oxford Gold Group and buy gold and silver. Nobody can predict the future, but we can't put our head in the sand either. The Oxford Gold Group are the pros. They make owning gold and silver simple and easy to understand. Call Oxford Gold Group right now and you may qualify for up to $10,000 in free precious metals. Call 833-995-GOLD. That's 833-995-GOLD. Lose 20 to 40 plus pounds guaranteed with NJ Diet. NJ Diet uses DNA and blood work to help you lose weight and keep it off. Tune into their radio show Sundays at 2 or visit NJDiet.com. Chronic pain, cancer, fatigue? Find out about the benefits of medical hydration therapy on Health Watch with Dr. Molly Fantasia every Sunday morning at 8 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. For a complete list of Talk Radio 1210 WPHT's contest rules, go to 1210WPHT.com slash rules. Hey, Joe DeCamera here to tell you why family and company jewelers on Route 70 in Marlton, New Jersey, is South Jersey's diamond destination and your trusted jeweler for quality, service, and price. You can choose from the largest selection of engagement rings in the area, or you can have their master jewelers create a custom one-of-a-kind ring just for your special day. Visit their showroom or shop online at FamilyJewelers.com. 
That's FamilyJewelers.com. Family and Company Jewelers, South Jersey's diamond destination. Jim Cipriati at Retire Ready Financial Group doesn't need Google to know you're worried about retirement. Between inflation, rising taxes, and the uncertainty about Social Security, he understands. That's why he offers a complimentary retirement second opinion. It's a no-obligation meeting for you to talk about your concerns about retirement. You want to know if you're going to be okay? Let's find out. 610-894-7415 or go online, retirereadyfg.com. Dot com. Insurance and annuities offered through James V. Cipriati and PN number 208-3768. Baseball is back. Basketball is heating up. And the NFL draft is right around the corner. Listen to the latest on the teams you love with the free Odyssey app. The biggest sports radio stations in the country providing unrivaled local coverage of their teams all in one place. Exclusive interviews with players, coaches, and team executives streaming live and always available on demand. Stay in the know with your favorite teams with Odyssey. A U D A. Download the free Odyssey app today. Hello, America. It's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you don't have Consumer Cellular yet, now is the perfect time to switch and save. For a limited time, new customers can get wireless service for as low as $15 a month for your first year. Yep, the same exact nationwide coverage as the leading carriers for $15 a month for an entire year. What are you waiting for? Call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com and use code RADIO15. See ConsumerCellular.com slash FIRSTYEAR15 for promotional details. Pass it on. You've heard it said, he's a diamond in the rough. Or maybe, diamonds are forever. Here's something else I've learned about diamonds. They're just pieces of coal put under pressure for a long, long, long time. So when I start feeling like I want to give up, I think about that little piece of coal. And if that piece of coal can make something of itself by not giving up, so can I. Persistence is in you. Pass it on. From PassItOn.com. My kitchen is the heart of my home. Dawn Stensland here. If your kitchen or bath is outdated, you need Kitchen Magic. They're local, family-owned, and operated since 1979. Schedule your free in-home design consultation today. Kitchen Magic is the full-service remodeler I trust to quickly, beautifully, and affordably transform your kitchen or bath. Right now, they're offering 12 months, no payments, no interest financing, and 10% off your remodel. Just visit KitchenMagic.com. Tell them, Dawn sent you. Drive in with Kale and Company mornings 6 till 10. Drive home with Rich Zioli afternoons 3 till 7. Live and local on Talk Radio 1210, WPHT, and the free Odyssey app. Kelly Company, 722, just about 23 minutes out from a Tuesday edition of What's on the Cut Sheet. Nick Dawn and Greg, 855-839-1210. That's how you climb in. Get us on the free Odyssey app. Watch us live on YouTube. So a very interesting story coming down yesterday from the state of Florida as Ron DeSantis signs a law that is banning kids in Florida under the age of 14 from getting on social media. It also restricts access for those under 16 years old. Uh, Per the New York Post, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis approved legislation Monday prohibiting minors under the age of 14 from using social media and mandating that 14 and 15-year-olds obtain parental consent before logging on. The new law, House Bill 3, compels social media firms to scrap the existing accounts for children and permits parents to request their child's account be terminated. DeSantis said in a statement yesterday, quote, social media harms children in a variety of ways. HB3 gives parents a greater ability to protect their children. He goes on to thank the Florida House Speaker Paul Renner for delivering the landmark legislation uh, to verify the age of users, the law, which will go into effect January 1st, 2025, will require social media companies to keep users' personal information anonymous and protected. They do go on to say, though, that the law is likely to face a legal challenge. Uh, I threw up a poll question on my Twitter, uh, and you can see it at Nick Kale and also at 1210WPHT. I said, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is now going to ban social media for minors 14 and under. 
as a parent, are you on board with this? And I'm actually a little shocked that almost four out of every five people that have voted, 78% say yes, as a parent, you are on board with this. Now, I look at it from two different perspectives. I look at the balance of a ban and doing what's best for minors, protecting children, and also I think social media just exacerbates mental health problems, not only for minors, but also for adults. But as I've become more and more anti-ban, and I told you over the last two weeks, I'm now against banning TikTok, this to me is on parents. In a perfect world, and I'm not saying like I'm, you know, Mother Teresa or Father Teresa, okay? (laughs) But like better parents, less government. I mean, like there's one guy on Twitter that responded to our poll, and I think he nails it. Gentleman E1970 says, do I think it's toxic, especially to young kids? Yes. Should young minors be on it? No. But is it his job to say no? No. And that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I don't want these bans because, number one, I don't think they're going to work. And number two, I don't think it's as simple as saying, hey, you're not going to be able to get on social media. I think, like, where there's a will, there's a way. So you're not going to be able to get on your favorite app in Florida if you're 13. What's to say you're not going to get on a desktop or a laptop or a computer And access these apps the old-fashioned way, right? Like, there's just so much nuance to this that I don't think it's attainable. I really don't. And they're going to go, you know, they're going to find a way, and then they're all going to sneak around about it. Yep. And so you're better off just, you know, educating parents on what to do. Educating parents, for example, and, and also liability. The, not that I'm a litigious person, but if these places know that they have to have certain gatekeeping efforts to make sure that these are not minors using their sites or whatever, mm-hmm. and just let it let them know, hey, you can be held liable, you know, if you if you don't make sure that a certain age group is not exposed or whatever. Right. But I think you know, to, I think we're all in the same wavelength on this one there yeah you know yeah and there's there's so many people that are commenting on this uh dave dorio says it's government overreach i totally agree uh christinizio new jersey on twitter says i'm normally against government intervention but i like this it should be the parents doing it like my wife and i do now but most parents uh most parents aren't and i can see the damage that it's done good for florida so this person is on board with it so You know, it's interesting is I think there would be if this actually holds up and survives any legal challenges and goes into effect. I do think at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, there's light for this because I do think you will see less anxiety, less depression, less minors that are totally, you know, warped up into the whole social media frenzy and the obsessions and the addiction that it creates. You know, I think there's a lot of people that think a lot of these mental health issues in our country today are hyper, you know, accelerated because of social media. And maybe that would lead to less issues, but it shouldn't be the government stepping in to do it, though. Agreed. And I also think that we should we need to. Don said this the other day, and I agree with it. If I'm the parent and I'm paying for your cell phone, you damn well bet I'm going to determine what you're going to have on your cell phone. And if I don't want social media on there, it's not going to be on there. And I do believe, which I know Don disagrees with, but I, I, I vehemently think that every school should take the phone at the beginning of the day and give them back the phone at the end of the day. Yeah, so, you and I are on the same page So, So I just think that if, if you put those two aspects For what in, age? into this, any age, any age. I would, I would keep phones away from kids until probably uh, ninth grade. Don, I know, I know your son has has medical issues. You have to make certain um, uh, exceptions uh, exceptions for situations like that. But for for ninety nine percent of people, they don't have those issues. So, like you, there's no reason for them to have phones in schools. So, if you take the parents in in that circumstance and and they say, hey, no social media on your phone, I determine what's on there and uh, so these phones get taken away at school. I think a lot of the problems would be would go away. 
Well, I think, and, and, and okay, to Greg's point, I've, I have different feelings about it. To Greg's point, you know, we've heard from police even to say that some of these after-school shootings started on social media in school and or retali- retaliatory efforts actually started on, you know, social media. And so there's actually, a, you know, you could say a violence aspect, not just the other impact of bullying and, and self-harm issues and all of that stuff. So it's a, it's a serious issue. On the other hand, I, I do think, I do wonder this, if you, is there a way to, to ban this stuff in school? Is there a way to have a limited use of your phone, such as a medical use or a basic, you know, you can text for emergency purposes or something of that nature. I don't even, I'm not a techie person, Mm -hmm. but I imagine that there probably is, that they could come up with ways in which you would have an app that would be the school app for a very limited use of your phone because they do use the phones, even in class, they use their phones, they have tablets, and so they they but have they to have... Be. They shouldn't be. But they do. Every school uses the tablets be. now. They shouldn't be. But they should, they should put, they should get rid of any ability to download an app or like the text messaging What app? about a freaking textbook? Like, yeah. I don't want to sound like an old guy, but what about a textbook? Well, just, Why do they need tablets? Well, I've, I've, had, they, I've had instances where ridiculous. my daughters will text me uh, from time to time from school, and I'm like... Wait a minute. Are they homesick today? What's going on? Like, I I would love to be a teacher for a day and just have like a big box at my front uh, front door when you come walking into my class. All right, everybody, drop your phone off. Right? It's like uh, Derek Jeter used to take the phone of whoever he was dating at the time when they came to his apartment because he didn't want to get caught up in any stuff. So, like, if you can remove <laughs> that, it's a great approach. Agreed. I love it. But I, when I text my youngest son in school in high school, if I texted him right now, he won't get he won't get the message because his phone. They are they are very strict with it. If Good. you use your phone, then you've abused the privilege. So he'll have his phone on his purse. So I could do if there was a, an emergency, I could do find my iPhone. That's the only way I could get a hold of him. But gotcha. he has his phone on his person. And then even on their laptop or the the school provided stuff that they use, Mm -hmm. which helps out with books as far as you don't have to lug around the heavy books and they keep the books in the classroom, which is kind of nice. Yep. But with the devices, Greg, they they have um, they do have safeguards on those devices in school where they can't, you know, they can't just do a Google search or whatever. Right. A lot of people also saying that this is why DeSantis will never be president. We don't do bans. We don't like control freaks. We like to have our personal liberties and freedoms intact. So, and that's, I'm, that's why with, I, you know, I'm, I'm mixed about it because of all the issues we've talked about. I really though want to trust my kids and I want them to learn, you know, especially by age 16, Yep. That they can be trusted, but if they abuse that privilege, if you abuse it, you lose it. Yep. Good point. I like that phrase, by the way. <laughs> Hashtag that. We can get that trending. <laughs> All right. Coming up next, uh, what's on the cut sheet is just about 12 minutes out. But before we get there, Ghostbusters and racism. It's Kale and Company, live here on a Tuesday morning. Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Texting privacy policy and terms and conditions posted at renofi.com slash notices. Texting enrolls for recurring automated text marketing messages. Message and data rates may apply. Reply stop, opt out. John, I'm putting my foot down. We can't put off renovating this house any longer. Our kitchen is so small. We need to finish the basement for the kids and don't even get me started on the bathrooms. Honey, renovating is so expensive. We can't do all those projects. With Renofi, we can. What's Renofi? Renofi loans are a new type of home equity loan only for homeowners doing renovations. We can get up to $500,000 and keep our existing low mortgage rate locked in. With Renofi, we can do everything on our renovation list and we don't have to refinance? That's right. Renofi loans are the only home equity loan that use the after renovation value. Just what we need. How do we get started with Renofi? Just send them a text. Text BASEMENT to 323232 and see if you qualify for up to $500,000 to renovate your home with Renofi. Unlock the future value of your home right now to get the money you need without refinancing. Text the word BASEMENT to 323232 to get started today. Text BASEMENT Basement to 323232. NMLS number 1802847. Not all borrowers or properties qualify. Loan terms apply. 
and Cherry Hill Volvo and XC40 can be leased for as low as $459 and an XC90 lease for as low as $629. Interest rates are as low as 4%. Along with Volvo sponsored incentives, the Cherry Hill Volvo offers are very aggressive. When purchasing or leasing a new Cherry Hill Volvo, special additional incentives will be given. Spring into Cherry Hill Volvo now for these incredibly fabulous offers. Don't miss Dr. Mary Ann Ritchie, your radio doctor, Saturday afternoons at 5. Tune in for accurate information so you can make the right medical decisions. Your radio doctor, Dr. Mary Ann Ritchie, Saturday afternoons at 5 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. For a limited time, when you call Oliver for a new air conditioner, you'll get a gas furnace for free. You heard right. Buy a new high-efficiency air conditioner today, and the gas furnace is free. Plus, 0% financing and monthly payments as low as 99 bucks. Call 855-275-6548 or visit OliverHeatCool.com. Oliver Heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Reliable, fast service you've come to trust for more than 50 years. Financing and payments are subject to credit approval. Terms and conditions apply. I'm Bev. My husband, Bill, is living with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, a type of interstitial lung disease that can scar your lungs and make it hard to breathe. ILD can be hard to diagnose. If you're out of breath with a constant dry cough, ask a pulmonologist if it could be ILD. Bill and I have been married for over 60 years and we're looking forward to more. If you or someone you love may have ILD, find support, hope, and help at lungsandyou.com. Here's retirement phase expert Phil Canella with today's report. We're calling today's report Financial IQ. The American Institution of CPAs Financial Literacy Commission's recent study found that 63% of the U.S. population failed a basic financial literacy test. As baby boomers retire, they have a troubling financial future, along with many other Americans making the same mistakes, ranging from credit card debt and the lack of budgeting to emergency savings shortfalls, expensive car loans, and non-existing retirement goals. Everything is tied together and will determine one's successful financial future. Now, according to the Financial Literacy Commission, this lifestyle of not budgeting or planning creates a vicious cycle. People need credit cards to pay for their high cost of everyday spending, such as mortgages and health insurance. And the average car loan is a staggering $528 per month. And because we didn't budget correctly, and many of us are living beyond our means, we're not gonna have that rainy day funds left over. So retirement financial goals will suffer greatly, which puts your future at risk. Now that explains why more than half the people working don't think they're gonna have enough money for retirement. And that's according to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. The foundation for a high financial IQ is education, complete with an evaluation of your finances. Seek out your retirement phase expert who will allow you to take control over your financial future. To hear more reports that will impact your financial future, join Phil Canella and Joanne Small this Saturday at 11 a.m. on the Crash Proof Retirement Show, only on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Free speech lives here. What's on the cut sheet? You will find out in under seven minutes as we continue. Kale and Company, Nick Dawn and Greg. Also, after the cut sheet in the nine o'clock hour, got some uh, deep dives we will take for Pennsylvania politics. A very interesting column written by Selena Zito of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette talking about how the election and Pennsylvania, it won't be decided in Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. But it will be in the following counties. We'll get to those coming up in a little bit. Also, a uh, Susquehanna poll for Pennsylvania is out. We'll give you those details. And also the Real Clear Politics polling averages for Trump v. Biden in both Pennsylvania and Michigan. 855-839-1210. All sorts of news today. Obviously a big day in court yesterday for Trump. We have uh, a bridge issue. <laughs> I mean, this is just an unbelievable story that's playing out before our very eyes. In Baltimore, we've been all over 
that this morning. You also heard about Sean P. Diddy Combs and what he has been uh, uh, allegedly uh, you know, implicated in from a human trafficking and sex trafficking standpoint. So all sorts of major, major stories. I'll get to this uh, Ghostbusters racism story in just a moment as well. But the other big story is also um, uh, in the world of sports, not so much with sports specifically, but Shohei Otani of the Los Angeles Dodgers, who is uh, one of these phenoms that can also hit and pitch simultaneously. Uh, He has been uh, brought up in a gambling scandal with his interpreter, to the point where his interpreter apparently is gambling millions upon millions of dollars. And uh, the, one of the biggest faces in the entire sport is like, I had no idea this was happening. Yeah, a little Pete Rose type <laughs> story going on here. Which, by the way, um, and it's not like we'll get into this hardcore, but I, I do want to say a few things on this story. Uh, I can't imagine, I, I, I can't wrap my head around Shohei Otani being completely in the dark and oblivious to the fact that his interpreter lost four and a half million dollars in gambling debts. I, I don't know what an interpreter makes. I can only relate this to like a smaller comparison years ago. When Tiger Woods was on his A game in golf, his caddy made under a hundred grand a year. Think about that. Tiger Woods was making millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. The guy carrying his bag made less than six figures. I can't imagine Shohei Otani's terp- interpreter is making a million dollars a year, right? Oh, I don't Probably know. Probably not. I don't know, man. I, I You have to think about it. This guy goes with him everywhere. But, ga- I mean, four and a half million dollars in gambling losses. Yeah. You got to imagine he won a better too, right? If this was really going on. So this guy was gambling probably tens of millions of dollars sure. yeah. to lose five million dollars. Yep. Uh, and you have no idea. And oh, by the way, where are you getting that money? Because unless you're, this is like in the weeds with gambling, but like, you know, if you go on FanDuel or Bet Parks, you got to deposit the money up front. Sure. So unless he's betting with a bookie on credit, which by the way, nobody will extend you that line of credit from a gambling standpoint if you make $60,000 a year, okay? Like I can't go to Nunzio on on ninth and uh, diamond here and say, "Hey, give me a line of credit for two and a half million dollars. I want to go nuts on opening day." Yeah, because I'm not going to be given that kind of money. Well, he Otani claims that this is a a situation of betrayal that the interpreter betrayed him was actually stealing from him. Oh, uh, but, wow! So oh, that I didn't know that. So he that's the latest. It's just out. It's just out. So it's a, that's the latest. That I see that wow. the translator he says uh, betrayed him, and that that now there's an attorney speaking out. Otani's okay. um, attorney says that that in fact Otani is a victim of massive theft. And certainly, we have seen stories in the past where super, super, super wealthy people are being robbed blind by their accountants or their financial advisors, and then all of a sudden, the the celebrity or the athlete's like, "Wait a minute, where did all that money go?" But the interpreter of all people, that, that seems a little suspect to me. It's a it's a hard uh, it's a hard ask for me to believe that Otani is completely oblivious to this. But he well, said, "I'm very saddened and shocked that someone who I trusted has done this." Yeah. Did he say that through his interpreter? <laughs> through, his, through, I guess, the new, <laughs> the new interpreter. Yeah. Hey, by the way, since you got all that money, uh, Otani, Rosetta Stone. I hear it's affordable. <laughs> I, dude, I agree with you about this stuff. The a lot of these baseball players just refuse to learn the language. It is annoying. You are being paid. I mean, he's one of the highest paid players oh my in God. baseball. He just got what? What? What did he get? Seven hundred million dollars or whatever it was. It by so America pays you very nicely, sir. Please. I've been saying that for please, years. Please loin. Please learn loin. I took my please honeymoon, loin the language. I took my honeymoon to Italy for twelve days. I felt compelled to learn basic uh, Italian. I, it just, I just didn't want to be rude. It just infuriates me. It just infuriates. Can I tell you me. something. Uh-oh. I'm sure he's he's Japanese. Yeah. I'm sure. That he knows English, but I think that to speak, that first of all, it gives a, a little delay. It gives you a filter and a minute mm-hmm. in those news conferences. And the other piece of it is, it's one thing to speak a second language, and he probably speaks multiple languages, but it's quite another to take reporters' questions, and especially that 
nasty little pool of reporters. Well, they're yeah. pretty nasty. They're, they are, I think they are they're na- nasty. They are nasty people. Yes, and so are. I'm going to defend that because it gives you that minute, that filter, and as well then it gives you a little help because you have the cultural differences and expressions, things you might not quite get. Yeah, it's a good point. I also love the convenient excuse for people where you know they understand English and at times they pretend they don't. <laughs> Eight five five. I try that at my husband all the time, Nick. I, I've been trying that for years with my wife. No hablo <laughs> inglés. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll save this Ghostbusters story for you and then also the Pennsylvania politics stuff coming up in the 9 o'clock hour. But right now, let's get to a Tuesday edition of What's on the Cut Sheet. What's on the cut sheet on this Tuesday is sponsored by Cherry Hill Volvo, where right now you can lease an XC40 for $459 or an XC90 for $629 per month, and interest rates are as low as 4%. Hurry in to Cherry Hill Volvo for details today. Check them out over at 70 and Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill Volvo, where relationships matter. We've been breaking, uh, we've been updating you all morning on the breaking news of this bridge collapse in Baltimore, Maryland, where officials say two people were rescued from the water after the bridge collapsed. Um, there was a news conference that happened sometime in the six o'clock hour. We played a little bit of it for you during dawn seven o'clock news, but I'm going to play just a few uh, clips for you right now. Um, anytime something like this, anytime a, a situation like this happens, you always wonder if it's intentional terrorism like your mind always goes absolutely to the things so uh they they're ruling out the, the they say there is absolutely no indication uh on the terrorism front so i'm gonna go to cut 18 here phil if you will my friend go to go back to the question about the the terrorism there is absolutely no indication that there's any terrorism that, that this was done on purpose our criminal intel is working with the fbi and other federal and state agencies to get all the intel that we have, but there's absolutely no indication that it was intentional. All right, well, that's good to know, uh, but it, that is certainly where my mind goes yep. almost every single time. I think it's really just the aftermath of the post-9-11 effect. Anytime you see infrastructure that mm-hmm. gets struck by any sort of moving object, whether it's a car that goes up onto the sidewalk into a building or a plane, obviously, hear a boat, a barge hitting a barrier on a bridge. I mean, that's one of the first things that pops into my head every single time. I'm seeing reports, too, that there were there was contact from that ship saying we lost power. I don't know if that's true or not, but but they were that trying to explain a lot. They were trying to alert people that that they had lost power and they, you know, and couldn't see where they were going. To to my knowledge, and I'm looking at the visual of the boat now, you see all those um little uh yeah, Phil, if you can, my friend, can you put up uh, the visual of the bridge collapsing? Those big containers that are stacked probably 8 to 10 high, those barges don't go ultimately that fast. Ooh. So that's a good thing. But you can see there, who was it? NBC had a shot, the night yeah. shot. And you can see the, you know, the the wake. I mean, it's, it's going at a pretty good clip yeah. because you can see it's cutting the path and creating you know, uh, cr- creating the waves yep. that are pretty safe. It was, it looks like it's out of control. Makes you wonder who's behind the wheel, so to speak. Was this person not paying attention? Did the light, because it's at 140 at night, did the light not shine where he could see the the barrier? Was There's, he under the influence? Well, the, the latest is that yeah. CCTV, as well as marine tracking data, is showing the container ship lost power for at least 60 seconds, and that was four minutes before it struck the bridge. Okay. But with a with a uh, rig that big, yeah, four minutes, you Not can't just... Not enough time to... You can't just say, all right, stop, or back right. up, let's do a U-turn here. Like, Pro- yeah, that probably enough happen. time to maneuver it around. I yeah. mean, th- like, think about, like, you know, the Titanic with the iceberg. Right, like the Titanic saw the iceberg, they tried to steer the wheel, yep. but it still scraped the side, yep. and the rest yep. is history. Yeah, it says it's the ship is called the Dolly, mm. like as in Salvador Dolly, like D A L I. It's registered to Singapore. It was leaving the port of Baltimore this morning before it lost power. Video shows black smoke coming from the ship before it actually struck and then collapsed that bridge in seconds. 
the shipping company Maersk released a statement on it. Hmm. So that's, it was uh, en route to Sri Lanka. Yeah, I'm looking at the, they're showing the, the aerial footage now. I mean, you have it connected on the left, connected on the right, big chunk missing in the middle, and then there's bits and pieces top and bottom uh, if you're watching the Fox News feed. Well, that's why, Phil, if you can go back to the uh, video one more time, too. Because if you look at it where it hit on, on the bottom there, see, if you look at where it hit on the bottom, that that is the one side goes down and then the other side kind of... W would that happen like that? I guess so. I mean, yeah. Because it's all, yeah, it's all right. connected. So. I mean, it's like a seesaw effect, right? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. amazing how fast it goes down. Really yeah. quickly. Jeez. Like, do you, are you, in all seriousness, if you're one of those construction workers working on the bridge and you see it coming to like, do you. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thinking. Do you do an OS moment and I don't well, know. You don't have time to run, right? Well, no, because so you're in the middle of the bridge. Right, so you're probably just. You know, you're like Leonardo DiCaprio when the Titanic's ready to capsize. You're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting. Yep. And then you jump and you just hope that the momentum doesn't suck you down yep. too far. Uh, we talked about this earlier. I'm going to say it again. If you're in a car, you start going down. Do you open the door, jump out? Do you open the windows? Do you leave the window? What do you do? You tune in the 1210 WPHT <laughs> and see what Thawne's breaking it down for you. That's what you do. I feel like, I, I feel like my instincts would be to jump out. I, that might make it worse. I'm not sure what I would really do, but my fear would be, like I, I've thought about like being in a in a uh, you know some sort of enclosed area Ugh, that you can't that you can't force open the object you want to move out of the way to get out into the water to swim up. Yeah, because eventually you're going to run out of oxygen or the water's going to come through. Like I, I I keep thinking back. You know what I was thinking about this morning as well when I was driving in. And listening uh, to our, our, our sister station cover this, um, remember the Titan submersible for the yes. Titanic exploration? Yep. Remember how the reports were of how awful that was for yep. those? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the stuff that goes through my head. If your car is forced off the bridge into water, try not to panic. Allow the water to gradually fill the car to equalize the pressure. And during that time, make sure everyone in the car is conscious and unrestrained. Once the car is submerged, open the doors or windows or kick out the windshield in order to escape the vehicle ah. and then swim to the surface. Uh, so you you can actually create enough force against the windshield or the window with the water underneath? I would think that like if you tried to kick that while you're underneath. That, no, no, like, no, no, no. What she's saying is is that because we said this earlier, when you hit the water, you're not, the car's not immediately going to sink. Right, right. It's like a cork. Yeah, it bobs. It bobs and boops. So when that is happening, that's when you look around, make sure everybody is conscious. That's when you jump out. Okay. Or kick the window if you are able to. I wouldn't. Is there going to be a quiz at the end of this show? I wouldn't trust that. <laughs> I wouldn't trust that. I don't know. Uh, the um, the Baltimore uh, mayor uh, was on hand here. Uh, this is a guy by the name of Brandon Scott. Um, and this is what he said about this. This is cut 17, Phil Go. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, everyone, this is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to uh, first and foremost pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families. I uh, pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we are uh, working through this uh, tragedy. Uh, this is an ongoing active uh, research uh, that we're having right now. We're gonna continue, as you heard from Chief Wallace, throughout as long as we have to be doing that, we will do it. Uh, but we have to be thinking about the families and people impacted, uh, folks who uh, we have to try to find and save. This is what our focus should be on right now. Uh, we're going to continue to work in partnership with every part of government to do everything that we can uh, to get us through the other side of this tragedy. And with that, I'll turn it over to County Executive Olszewski. We got some people saying on uh, Twitter that it'll probably take anywhere from a year to two years to rebuild that bridge. Yeah, um, I don't know off the top of my head how many you know bridges are in the Baltimore area, but is that a that's a I'm assuming that's a widely uh, and mm -hmm. massively consumed and traveled yep. yeah bridge yeah oh boy Tra I mean I I'm just a guess Baltimore traffic's probably not the best I can only imagine how much worse it'll be now without that yeah 
It's one point, it's a little over one and a half miles. Oh, wow. It's a long Ooh. bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Oh, boy. Don, for the people just tuning in now, what are the updates on survivors and all that stuff? After the container ship um, crashed into one of the supports of this 1.6 mile long bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, in the U.S., um, and there's this is a Reuters report in the U.S. port of Baltimore in the darkness of the early morning, causing it to collapse, sending cars and people plunging into the river be- below, which reportedly is 48 degrees. So divers were able to pull out two survivors, one in very serious condition. The other man said he was fine. He's not. He was. He refused treatment, in fact, and reportedly wanted to to help with the. And this is reported wanted to help with the rescue efforts or to stay on scene, but this is the Patapsco River, and it's a huge river there um, in the in the port of Baltimore. We know that at least seven vehicles plunged into the water. A lot of fuel also spilled, and so we don't know. They're they're calling it a mass casualty. Wow catastrophic event, multi-agency event. And what was the name of the river you said? How do you pronounce that? It is the uh, Patapsco. 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 Okay. The Patapsco River. I never heard of that. Patapsco River. I was wondering if it was the Potomac, but I guess it's not that. Patapsco River. All right. Spans 1.6, so not quite two mile long, but it's obviously, it just crumpled into the water. Wow. Wow. So dive teams and law enforcement, first responders, firefighters from across the region, dive teams. So they have local, state, federal. Everybody is, you know, coming to their Baltimore is the busiest U.S. port for car shipments, handling more than 750,000 vehicles. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Population wise, much smaller than Philadelphia. I think Baltimore is like maybe the 20th biggest uh i I think from at least a radio tv market it's like around market 20 or so could you imagine if this was a local story and this happened to one of our bridges imagine how awful i mean it happened to 95 well yeah but i'm talking like i mean imagine one of the bridges and there's what three or four that you can take over into jersey and delaware imagine if one of those went down how screwed this city would be yeah i'm just thinking based on a sheer population basis now the the Synergy Marine Corps said the ship, no, the container ship known as the Dolly, D-A-L-I, that struck that pillar and apparently had some kind of an outage minutes before. They say all its crew members, including the two pilots, are accounted for and there are no reports of injuries on the container ship. Wow. So the seven people they're searching for that are believed to be in the water are not having to do with the ship. Okay. They are... Um, mainly construction workers who were pouring concrete yeah. in the middle of the night because, you know, a lot of times people will do overnight road work. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's what was going on. Oh, so these man. are construction workers pouring concrete. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like, from everything I'm gathering, there was not one pedestrian vehicle that went down. I don't know that, Nick. Okay. I don't. That's what I'm trying to figure out because they said there was a, a at least one large semi tractor trailer. But was that there associated with the construction workers? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So that's part of what that, I don't know. That's a long bridge, too. It is. Like, look at the size of that. That is a long bridge. So 1.6 miles. Um, Pete Buttigieg put out a statement uh, this Mayor morning. Mayor Pete! I've spoken with Governor Moore and Mayor Scott to offer U- U.S. DOT support following the vessel strike and collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Rescue efforts remain underway, and divers in the... Uh, it just went away. Sorry. <laughs> Think about also the pollution and the contamination of the water that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Yeah, with yeah. the fuel sp- yep. spill, diesel fuel. Do you think yep. Do you think Joe will get to Baltimore quicker than he did East Palestine? It's <laughs> a good question. I'm just wondering. By the way, streaming live on YouTube, youtube.com slash at 1210WPHT. We've had a lot of uh, uh, viewers uh, this morning, so if you're new or, or if you haven't done so yet, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the subscribe button. And also, it, uh, if you have not done so, please hit the like button for today's show. Let's stay in Baltimore now this is a i don't know if it's a good segue or not but apparently baltimore is now uh facing 
um, apocalyptic levels of policing shortages. Oh, shocking. That's a defund the police city as well, I think. Last week, three police officers, let me repeat that again, three police officers patrolled a whole district of 61,000 residents. Mm. Three police officers. Strength in numbers. Here is the uh, here is the news report on that. This is cut. Where are we here? Skipping around here. Cut 11, Phil, go. In the Southern District on Tuesday, there was a plea for officers to work overtime. Minutes later, it went citywide. Baltimore Southern Police District is the city's largest district, 61,000 residents. And on Tuesday afternoon, sources tell us at one point there were three police officers on patrol. Just seconds after the plea for officers hit the airwaves, so did pleas for help. If anyone in Sector 2 can come clear, we have a physical child abuse at Moore oh Park. God. And there's mm -hmm. a 10-year-old at the location with bruises all over his body. Okay, we also have a common assault. We have a missing person, 2640 D. Does anybody Ten want to respond after to this? That child abuse call was transmitted. It appears there were still no officers en route. Oh my God. Yes, sir. Can be advised we are now holding 10 calls. No priority ones. We still have the physical child abuse and the common assault. And it's heartbreaking. Imagine if you are a, a crime victim. Betsy Smith with the National Police Association calls the city's police staffing dangerously low. That's you are Dawn's endangering gal. the yeah. lives of the police officers that are on duty. And what that further does is endanger the lives of the citizens. There's 522 vacancies. At a city budget hearing last year, the top brass admitted it struggled with recruitment and is hoping to hire civilians to fill in the gaps. We're looking at upwards to 120 to 140 positions that we're trying to create in this request to be able to sustain going forward. The reason that nine out of every 10 police departments in this country is short staffed is because we have been dealing with here in the United States uh, this three and a half, almost four year vilification and demonization yep. of the American law enforcement officer. Until perceptions change, Smith predicts recruitment will not improve and the pleas for officers will grow louder. Oh my God. Are you happy, Baltimore? Are you happy, Philadelphia, New York, Chicago? defund, demonize, demoralize. This is what you get. Nine out of ten, you heard right there from Betsy, nine out of ten are shortchanged. I'm a big believer in less is more, except when it comes to sheer number of police. More is better. And I think a lot of these people that live in these progressive hell holes that voted for these politicians that don't have to live in the ghetto that you have to live in, they don't have to deal with that because they have their own private police and security. I think we're about done with the experiment of defunding the police. Not saying you're going to get the numbers back just like that overnight, but the experiment itself to me is winding down. Uh, the department is now postponing police training in an attempt to solve shortages. So, so basically they're just saying, hey, anybody want to be a cop? Because uh, yeah. you can just jump right on the force. 61,000 citizens patrolled by three officers. And from, from what it looks like there from that clip, nobody was biting at the time and a half, were they? And but, No. Hey, we got overtime. Anybody want it? No, nah, I'd rather go home and not be vilified or shot at. It is. It, and by the way, these are the areas that need it the most. Yes. That's they it. need it the most. And most of these citizens, when they're interviewed by the media, they're like, yeah, we want more police, not less. I hate to say it, but like, if you if, if there were only three police officers in Radnor, yeah. it'd be fine. I, You know what it is? <laughs> but, I, you know. I, this is once again where I think there's just a select few that are vocal. Like, I think you have two groups of people that wanted to defund the police. Squad Dems that <laughs> ran on it for office. And white liberal elites that don't have to deal with it. Peter S. says, Police Academy, Citizens on Patrol. That's yeah. exactly, that, that movie, which was a comedy that came out in the 80s, is uh, becoming a reality these yep. days. It's unbelievable. Yes, it is. Um, so Stephen Colbert apologized for a bit that he did. And I want to get both of your opinions on this. Did because, he apologize for not being funny? Well, <laughs> no, he didn't. But oh. I... I you know the tragic news of of the uh, cancer diagnosis of Kate Middleton, and I I, I, I despise the royal family, but you do not uh, wish this on anybody, of course not, especially not a you know a forty 
40 year old mother with you know young kids um but there was there was a time frame here where we didn't really know what was going on we saw photos being faked we saw this we saw that people said they spotted her but they were actually not and there that led to a lot of people speculating on things so colbert made jokes about it and he went on air last night and he apologized for making jokes about that and i want you to hear the apology and i want to and i want your opinion on if he should have done this or not this is cut 13 phil go everybody please have a seat thank you ladies and gentlemen you know folks i don't know if you have noticed but we we do a lot of shows and 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 i tell a lot of jokes and i tell jokes about a lot of different things mostly what everybody's talking about and for the last six weeks to two months everybody has been talking about the mystery of kate middleton's disappearance from public life not us not and us. <laughs> uh two weeks ago we did some jokes about that mystery and all the attendant you know, frou fra in the reporting about that. And when I made those jokes, uh, that upset some people. And even before her diagnosis was revealed. And I can understand that. I mean, a lot of my jokes have upset people in the past. And I'm sure some of my jokes will upset people in the future. But there's a standard that I try to hold myself to. And that is, I do not make light of somebody else's tragedy. Now, I don't know whether her prognosis is, is a tragic one. She's the future of Queen of England, and I assume she's going to get best possible medical care. But regardless of what it is, I know, and I'm sure many of you, far too many of us know, that any cancer diagnosis of any kind is harrowing for the patient and for their family. And though I'm sure they don't need it from me, I and everyone here at The Late Show would like to extend our well wishes and heartfelt hope that her recovery is swift and thorough. Now, please say hello to Lewis Cato on the Late Show Band. Now back to my unfunny <laughs> jokes. <clears throat> um, that was nice of him to say, but not necessary. Here's why. I don't like Colbert. I don't think he's funny. I don't pay attention to Kate Middleton. I don't pay attention to the royal family. I despise all of that tabloid Princess Diana stuff. I, I've never been interested in them. King Charles, the whole bit. The Queen of England, none of it. None of it appeals to me at all. That being said, I am consistent when it comes to comedy, even if I don't like the comic or I don't think the jokes are funny. Number one, he didn't know that she had this was exactly. leading up to it. Yep. And number two, it is comedy. You, you might get offended. My rule of thumb is as you enter the comedic venue, whether you're sitting on your couch to watch Colbert or going to see Bill Maher at the uh, Zlock Performing Arts Center, whatever it might be, Check your outrage at the door. It's a joke. And even though I don't like Colbert, I'm going to be consistent with it. I don't think he needs to apologize. I agree. That's just my opinion. Don? I, he's a loser. I, I wanted him to shut up three <laughs> words into it. I just, well, so did I. It did, and, we, and it's all about him. We hear the blah, 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 you know, whatever. Would he apologize if it was not Kate Middleton? And it was somebody that he was joking about that he likes to take shots at, let's say a Republican. Would he offer that apology? Let's 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 just throw it out there. Would he if if Donald Trump, God forbid, was diagnosed with cancer and it's all a great, of the, that's all a great of, question. All of the facts leading up. That's well, we question. didn't know. Does Colbert issue that mm -hmm. apology? Yeah. My guess is no. Um, but then again, I'm I'm very consistent with comedy. I, I think you should never ever apologize for jokes you make. Honestly, it it is it's it's a comedy show. I mean, allegedly, it's supposed to be a comedy show. Okay, but what about jokes in real life outside of the comedic, either the comedy you guys? Greg Stalker, you make a joke at a family gathering. I make a joke inside the walls of Odyssey. 
Do we need to apologize in society for jokes? Let's forget the elitists who have to defend themselves uh, in their profession. The Chappelle's of the world, the Colbert's, the Fallon's, you know, Jimmy Fallon, Greg Gutfeld, whether left or right, doesn't matter. Forget those people for a moment. Should we have to offer apologies in no. everyday life for jokes? No. I don't think we should. Not if that we j- joked about it. R- huh? We didn't even joke about it. We didn't even really talk about it. That's true. Kate Middleton. Right. Because we have... You know, bigger, we have real, 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 real content to chop up on this show. But like, I mean, there's times, honest to God, where I'm having like trash talking sessions with my buddies in our fantasy group text thread. And then I'll get a text from one person outside of the thread. That was a little over the top. And I'm like, it's a joke. This is a fantasy football thread. Yeah, yeah. Like we, Man we, just, up. we just have to, yeah. Like seriously, you and your daughter a, says, "Well, Dad, I beat you." And no, yeah, you make a joke <laughs> at the Thanksgiving dinner table, and all of a sudden, World War Five starts. Like, I mean, come on, get over it. People just gotta like lighten up a little bit. He needed to get back to the funny, and by the funny, I mean interviewing former Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer. What What is the obsession with the politicians on late night shows? Not even, uh, not even politicians. Like, I get it. He's talking. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's talking a book, but I, I mean, remember they had somebody on for abortion and stuff. And yeah, it's like, I tuned in for this. That was Kimmel. Yeah, that yeah. was Kimmel after the overturning of Roe. They had. Uh, um, I think his wife, Jimmy Kimmel's wife, came out and you know, painful. Yeah, it's it's activism. It's not late night anymore. It is. You're it's exactly activism. right. Um, this is uh, bring the, bringing the funny. Uh, former uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Stephen Breyer on Trump's immunity and the insurrection case because you know late night comedy. He has to apologize for jokes he made or a bit he did when he didn't know that the subject of that joke was actually suffering from a cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But this is... uh, He should apologize for being lazy and not coming up with better content. Cut 12, Phil, go. The last time... Last time you and I were talking, I learned from previous experience with you not to ask you about specific cases, so I will not do that. But I, I might ask about general ideas, okay? For instance, let me ask you just one general idea not pertaining to a particular case. Do you, uh, former Justice uh, Breyer, believe that former presidents have absolute immunity from prosecution for crimes committed while in office? Do you think, does that seem like a natural yes from you? That seems like a general idea. It is. That is a general idea. Do do, do former presidents have absolute immunity? It's not specific about one person. Would any president have that? I'm just curious what you, snap judgment, don't think about it, go. I agree that you have a general idea. (laughs) I can't go farther. I can't because of the... No fun. Then I'll ask you something that I think you can answer is like, yes. what do you think the purpose of the insurrection clause was? I haven't looked at, uh, well, I, well, it's I in the Constitution. I'll, it's an yes, excellent little it read. It is. It is. <laughs> it's only yeah. the 14th Amendment. Tell me you read that far. Okay. There it is. Okay. All right. Someone's got a Constitution all the time. All right. All right. So, but anyway, you know this, you know this document. I'm just curious. Why does it include no definition of what insurrection is? Do you have any any idea? Because it does say how someone could be reinstated, and it says that someone who committed insurrection can't run for office. Why does it need an actuating law or action by Congress to impose the sanction for insurrection? Do you have any thoughts on that? I'm tempted to say something like, but I wasn't there when it was written. My grandchildren think I was. (laughs) But in fact, I wasn't. And really what I'm doing is avoiding the question. Okay. (laughs) Right. We have to take a quick break. Wow. Boy, what a riveting segment. So let's bring on a former Supreme Court judge who is now 85 years old. In fact, he's so old he was nominated by Jimmy Carter, just to kind of put it into perspective and context. The guy's walking around with a pocket version of the Constitution in his jacket, which is a, a nice little classy touch. It's just not funny. It's lazy. And if I am somebody that is supposed to be appealed, uh, you know, like Stephen Colbert, I'm not really sure other than, you know, middle-aged liberals who he appeals to. The last thing I want to do is turn that show on and hear a Supreme Court justice pimping a book 
on top of the fact he's got nothing to say on the issue. Yeah. Right? I know you can't technically talk about some of this stuff, but, like, that is what you come up with. I'm telling you, man, let me just say this. Let let the day come where I'm ever asked to do a one-hour show. Not a four-hour show. A one-hour show. I will never give you garbage in a 60... There's so much stuff in the world that you can pluck and talk about on a show. Like, do better for your audience. Like, we run out of time in four hours, and some of these people can't put together 60 minutes with 15 producers. Uh Uh-oh. What? Our stream dropped. That's because you played too much of Colbert. What did you yeah, do? I, I played too much of Colbert. Mm-hmm. So CBS is Sorry just like NBC. That. If you're uh, if you were watching on the stream, just go over to uh, the Odyssey app. Download the Odyssey app. Uh, make sure you download the Odyssey app, A-U-D-A-C-Y. If you're listening right now on the Odyssey app, please hit the follow button. And also, uh, um, I think you have said this in the past, because I don't, I don't watch the late night shows in large part because they're not good, but because I'm also asleep at that time. Colbert is the ratings leader of the three. He is. Yep. He beats Fallon and Kimmel. He does. Let that sink in for a moment, folks. Yep. yep. Uh, over on MSNBC, they are still not over the fact that NBC hired Ronna McDaniel. <laughs> they played these uh, the 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 uh, the primetime shows last night were just wallowing in the fact that NBC News dare hire. Ronna McDaniel. When that was this the one night of the week that Maddow works? Maddow, we have we have Rachel Maddow, we have Lawrence O'Donnell. They were all very upset about the hiring uh-huh. of Ronna McDaniel. You know, it, this 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 amuses me because look, I'm no fan of Ronna McDaniel, but like she has a right if they if they want to hire her, she has a right to work. Yeah. Could you imagine being the brand manager of NBC today, having to deal with all your talent, questioning and, your decision to and, hire somebody? And by the way, if 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 certain shows don't want her on there, great. They don't have to have her on there. And if enough shows say, hey, we don't want her on there, maybe it's not worth the $3 million or whatever they paid her that it's uh, that it's worth paying her. But she has the right to work, doesn't mm-hmm. she? Yes. You also have the right to hire people that might have a different viewpoint than you. Uh, this is Cut 14, Rachel Maddow uh, on um, NBC uh, hiring Ronna McDaniel and MSNBC basically saying we're not bringing her on our airwaves. Uh, this is cut 14, Phil Go. It's my understanding that MSNBC's leadership did not object to Ronna McDaniel being hired by NBC News when the matter first arose. But when the hiring was announced and MSNBC staff essentially unanimously and instantly expressed outrage, our leadership at MSNBC heard us, understood, and adjusted course. We were told this weekend in clear terms, Ronna McDaniel will not be on our air. Ronna McDaniel will not be on well, MSNBC. And I say that and give you that level of detail because there has been an effort since by other parts of the company to muddy that up in the press and make it seem like that's not what happened at MSNBC. I can assure you that is what happened at MSNBC. Ronna McDaniel will not appear on MSNBC. So says our boss since Saturday, and it has never been anything other than clear. And I will also say, you know, if if you care what I think about this, I will tell you the fact that Ms. McDaniel is on 